Immortals, I'm Jensen, welcome back to Hydraenea. In the previous episode, we just started this here, Volcalidus DLC, and we are going to continue on with this, kind of at our leisure, I suppose. We just had enough coins from that time we went in here, and we... What do we do? I think we... We delivered a bunch of packages, didn't we? And we got enough coins basically to buy one little element of automation, and we're about to go and install it. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to function, but it is going to function regardless of whether or not the game wants it to or not. Also, this week's Try Not To Bop is Five Finger Death Punches F8, which is a banger of an album. If you fail the challenge, the Try Not To Bop challenge, if you accidentally find yourself bopping to a single song on that album, you've got to listen to it in one big sitting, if you find yourself bopping to one song in there, go ahead, go into the Discord. Hey, there's a bone right here. Go into the Discord and react to the album in the Try Not To Bop Challenge channel. The Discord should be right beneath the video description for this video. Now, I'm still also kind of riding the tail end of a cold too, so I'm just going to kind of like take it a little bit easy. I did my screaming warm-ups for the day, which is awesome. I love doing my screams. And hopefully we are going to be in a very, very good place. We got this lava intake pipe. This looks really cool, by the way. And I know that if we place this down somewhere and then just go to like pipe over this ice, it's probably going to immediately turn it into some kind of energy system, right? Oh, that doesn't work. We've got to stick it one block down. Is that good? Yep, that's perfect. Awesome. So let's go ahead and continue on. I didn't see when we were shopping, I didn't see a single little piece that uh, would kind of indicate that there's any like tiers of these lava pipes, but there may be. Because there are also tiers of stores, and I'm pretty sure we only have access to the first tier of stores. All right, let's stick that there. We're going to want to set up a little bit of a, a mining system with this right here. I'm probably just going to pipe it straight into a bucket of some sort as well. So we want another straight pipe. We've got a few straight pipes, which is pretty awesome. I don't know if we're going to, like, elbow down into the depths of this, but I'm pretty sure that if we just... Oh, uh, maybe it doesn't immediately interact with the ice. I suppose we're about to find out literally as soon as we place the next pipe, though. But essentially, what we want is for a little bit of automation to go on while we're also kind of like panning with the with the shovel and bucket. Because the panning in the DLC is really, really fun. All right, let's see. Oh, ah, you don't get any resources out of that, but you can melt ice with it. That's pretty cool. So I suppose that would be a really, really easy way of kind of like mining down into the bottom layer. So you could kind of like create the the most effective machine possible, right? So this one right here, I'm going to place one block away from that one, and we're going to put a T-junction where the other one is kind of like gapped out. And the reason we're going to do that is because we've got a very similar setup of machinery as we had kind of in the other world that we were kind of using, right? All right, let's go ahead and drop that there. Now we'll get this machinery here. I'll put the, the muncher in first, because I'm pretty sure the muncher is going to be much easier to set up. So we could probably set this... Uh, we can't, like, stick it... Right. Strange. Okay, so it needs to pipe in from the top. Whoops. Now, we do have a spear straight pipe, which we may have to kind of, like, use to lift it. Okay, that's not mining to any of this ice right here. Oh, it's not piped in. That makes sense. Okay. Let's go ahead and change that right this second. We've got a big bucket of resources. I don't know how we're supposed to kind of, like, convert this into marketable currency but there are a couple of other things oh that's right we were going to start this episode with a uh, achievement weren't we w thank you so much dead space mate we're going to go ahead and we're going to get the rarest achievement in the game by grabbing one of these snowballs and we're going to have to go on foot all the way back to the starting location hopefully we'll be able to kind of like make our way there without any map or any form of navigation or anything like that but it should just be down these crossroads into our right it's a pretty crazy one, actually. I don't think I would have ever tried this for myself unless I was really, really, really bored or uh, like I kind of went on to the uh, achievements page on Steam and then figured out exactly what the rarest achievement was and then realized just how easy it was to actually get straight out of the gate. And we are going to um, essentially get that right away. Why can't you just drive everywhere? We can drive everywhere, but unfortunately I've got something in my hand. I we can't drop the snowball. We, we need it for an achievement. Which is a little bit strange and a little bit fiddly, but at the same time, it's not going to take too long. And this is the rarest achievement in the game, so I definitely think it's worth a little bit of a journey on foot. 
We can also kind of like appreciate our surroundings, like the uh, gigantic, kind of looks like a, a cavern up there, doesn't it? If you look all the way up, but it's just a cloud. It's not like a river of, of black tar or anything on the other side of the uh, the cavern that we're walking on. We're not like walking on the on the sky, like in the Oblivion's Knights of the Nine DLC. What a DLC that was though. That was such a good one. Okay, good. So we are pretty close here. So the achievement is in this little town right here. And actually we have kind of figured out all of the things that we originally needed right in the last episode, which is pretty cool as well. So we go in here. We're going to need to go all the way through this kind of like area of garbage and crap and yucky warmth houses. Oh, there's a stock market here for weapons. All right, that's good to know. What about in here? Can we sell the snowball? No. What does this guy buy? Jewels. Right, gotcha. So I don't really think we can kind of like sell raw resources so much as we'll need to find all of the stores that do take the resources, which is good to know. All right, here we are. We're all the way back at the start of the DLC. We've got our handy dandy snowball. And we're gonna win. we're gonna get the Yes, it is for the king. Boom! Whoa, he missed. Nice. We just got the achievement assassin for throwing a snowball at the king. Ah oh, well. Get dunked on, kid! I'm 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 gonna get on top of him. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna teabag him. I'm gonna teabag the king. I know this is probably something that may get me beheaded, but uh I think it's definitely gonna be a little bit worth it. Alright, let's come up here. And the snowball's right here! Oh, we didn't have to go on that big journey. What's the way? <laughs> okay, I'm still... Oh, okay. I'm going to teabag the king. This is probably actually going to be harder than getting that achievement, but I think it will be worth it for the for the kind of, like, the internet... Yeah, it is for the king. I'm getting my nuts out for the king. Here we go. Oh, just missed. Just missed. Just missed. Just missed. That's okay. We will teabag the king. Here we go. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I was actually. I also just kind of teabagged you. I didn't realize we were going to bounce on his head, but... You know, we, I, I'm going to count that as a teabag. That is a successful teabag. All right, I hope everybody's happy with us getting the rarest achievement in Steam. And I'm actually not joking either. Only 0.3% of players have this achievement. Here, I'll actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll show you. Uh, where is it? Right here, 0.3% of players have this achievement. It's really, really rare. There you go. And now everybody knows what games I've got installed in my system. They're all fun. They're all fun, but you might not be able to play all of them if you're uh, underage. A lot of them are age restricted. I'm also halfway through downloading Gotham Knights. A lot of people have been talking about Gotham Knights recently, so I figured I'll give it a go, but I don't know. It kind of looks like, it looks like a beat-em-up, essentially, with like two buttons, right? Well, maybe three buttons if you want to get complicated, like a light attack for square, heavy attack for triangle, and of course the uh, good old circle for, for dodge. I think those are literally all of the controls. I don't know if, the hell? How the hell did we miss that bone? Did we miss that bone? We did miss that bone. What? Huh? We just walked along here. How could we have missed this? We didn't like, we weren't looking up at the sky, were we? It's right in the intersection. There's no shot we would have missed that. We've been down here so many, oh, I think actually we took a different path, so. All right, free leg. <laughs> free profit, nice. Excellent. Uh, also, I did do a little bit of research on the internet. Some people have given, like, a couple of hints about how to kind of play the DLC online, but they haven't necessarily created any good guides for, like, everything on the DLC world. I've seen a guy that kind of told us exactly what we were looking at when we looked at the map, and while that was particularly unhelpful, it did tell me one thing that I didn't ever consider, which is that up at the peak of that volcano is kind of like the equivalent of Icehelm's crafting area. So we're probably going to go up there and we're also going to check that out at some point as well. It kind of does look like there's a road that goes up to the top of there. But, again, not entirely sure just how reliable this information is. Looks pretty cool, actually. I do like this, like, Mordor kind of area that we found ourselves in. Or the, the Southlands. I don't know. I don't know how familiar everybody is with uh, Second Age Lord of the Rings lore. Okay, let's drop this in the back right here. I'm going to go ahead and unload these pipes as well, just to kind of like get everything that we're using out of the truck. You know, just have all of the all of the pieces available to us. What else we got? One more elbow, and that's literally it. So these are all the pieces that we can afford. I don't know what we're necessarily going to do with these, but I'm pretty sure we can kind of like set up this mining system, right? 
Let's go ahead and put that there. Cool. All right, that's going to mine. Let's go ahead and stick that up like that because we're going to need to elbow in from up top as well. And we're probably also going to need another straight pipe to do something. I don't know. Like so. And this, I'm actually going to go ahead and turn it off first before we place it by hitting that lever. And then we're going to jam it on the side of this. And we're going to use a shovel to put some ice up its bum bum. I don't know if the ice disappears either, though. So we're probably going to have to figure that one out for ourselves, too. Okay, we've got one spare elbow, which is just fantastic. We're going to go ahead and take this, and we're going to whack this bad boy right onto the lava system as well. It's probably a little bit high, but, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. We're also going to need to get some kind of... Is that on? I can't tell. I literally cannot tell. Let's put, a, let's put this pipe, like, right here as kind of like a little step. Yeah, it's definitely working. So now we need that bucket, or a bucket of some sort. I'm thinking this one might do the... Tr what the hell is that? What is this? Ice. A small clump of ice. Did this mine something? Oh, we got a block of gold. Excellent. And we now know exactly where everything is going to be dumped out. It's right there. Hopefully. Hopefully it's going right there. If it's not, we'll know pretty quickly. Okay, I'm going to turn this on. We're probably going to need some repair kits as well. Ah, that's right. We need to shovel some ice up its bum bum, don't we? Right there. There we go. Excellent. Yep, that was a hell of a miss. Let's go right here. Nope, complete miss. Needs to go right here. Whoops. Let's go right here. Okay, we're going to need the bigger bucket, I think. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. We can always go and buy another bucket, I think. We probably want to process all of these materials anyway. I know that we can sell gems straight off the bat, which is going to be awesome. Oh, one of them went into the bucket. Nice. Slam dunk. Let's move this. And I'm just going to stick this one right here. I think that's probably where all of them go. Nope. Complete miss. Probably should have just, you know, looked at all of the pieces of stuff all around the ground. So we got to move it slightly sideways. Right there. Good. And where's that rock that went through it? Yep, oh, that was a miss. It's probably a little bit high, right? It's probably a little bit too high to gauge exactly where all of these bits are going to fall. Like, maybe there? Nope, that was a complete miss as well. Whoops, didn't want to pick that up. Maybe here? Okay, that looks more accurate, but I'm still pretty sure we're going to need some kind of platform or something. Otherwise, it's just going to miss half of the load that shoots out onto the ground here. Or not. I'd say, actually. Okay, so we've got a little bit of automation set up. We could probably go out... Oh, we've got a couple of things in here, too. We can probably go out and start exploring a little bit now while that kind of fills up. And we can also go and explore some more avenues for how to generate a little bit more money. What is this, torch? Yep, that's definitely a torch. Let's see what happens if we just drop this on the ice. Nothing. Okay, I thought it would melt it, but it doesn't. Uh, I'm actually, there's a person sitting way over there. I'm just going to try and snipe them with the snowball right here. Boop. Oh, not even close. We're a terrible shot. All right, what does this say? So New Glade has a bunch of quests uh, set up around it. And there's also a yellow exclamation mark there, which I'm pretty sure is actually the store that we were setting up there. Now, looking at the Volcalidus Peak in the middle of the volcano, there is actually a little wangle dangle right in the middle of it. So why don't we go up there and try and get our bearings just by exploring that area? We've got a map in the back as well, so we won't get too lost. I think going down here is going to be really, really handy because we can just go straight up this path right here. We should probably refuel this truck before we do anything else. It also has kind of like a big ring right on top of it. So I imagine there's going to be some kind of crane that's going to lift it up at some point. I've seen a couple of items that we can just kind of lift up with some rings on them. I imagine we can lift them up. I don't actually know for certain. All right, nothing down there. I'm definitely looking around and I'm making sure I'm not missing any bones. Because we want to collect all of the bones that we can. Pretty sure there's like a... a oh, that was close. I'm pretty sure there's like a, a pretty good reward for getting all the bones. We kind of want to, we want a bone. We That's our goal. We want a bone. All right, what's around here? Not a hell of a lot up here. I'm going to guess that there's like a bone hidden somewhere. But again, I just don't know how easy they are to find or if they just kind of spawn after a while. All right, let's go ahead and jump over here. I definitely recognize that this is in fact a uh, elevator. Hopefully we're about to be crushed. We live. Oh, we can't jump into it. Oh, no. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> do we need to, like, drive on it? Like, I'll, I'll do it, obviously. 
Okay, I can't see. Can't see under there. Okay, I turned my horn a few times. Uh, did a wee save right there. Let's go ahead and drive onto this. Excellent. Okay, so now we are at the peak. We probably didn't need to drive onto this per se. But this does look like a pretty good method of gathering resources. What is, what is there, a bone over there? I didn't see a bone at all. All right, what is this? What is this bad boy? It's pretty imposing. We're, we're in a, a pretty imposing spot. Okay, so taking a look around here. A couple of little stairways to heaven along here. What is this? Huh? huh? Okay, so huh? this is probably a crafting station, right? Where we can kind of craft ourselves. Oh, right. I see the podium right here. So we need to get ourselves a couple of those tokens. I imagine this is where the... I don't know what this is. Probably gems of some sort. This is probably where the ingots are going to pop out after we craft something, right? Most likely. All right. I've seen enough. We're, we're leaving now. We've got the hang of this place. Okay, let's go ahead and just kind of like back ourselves off of here because there's no destruction on the vehicles. Now this is the jump I wanted! Little Dukes of Hazard style right there. That wasn't actually the outcome I wanted, but we definitely wanted to uh, kind of drive off of the edge of there for fun regardless. Okay. So let's go ahead and just go around this corner. I'm probably going to fall off of the, <laughs> the goddamn map. It's pretty funny. I wonder if we can kind of like see bones from up here. That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? But I wouldn't hold my breath. I wouldn't hold my breath in saying that we can see bones up here. You know, because I, I don't see any bones up here. We can see a long way, though. Oh, my God. Whoop, that was close. Almost just rolled off of the edge there. I wonder if we flip this car onto its top, if that can refill its little nose. Why don't we try that? Because we may be able to skip uh, having to bucket lava into the top of this thing to fuel it. Let's try that. I'll do that now. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a big turn around here. I'm pretty sure I know how to flip this car, which is uh, not too hard. Just got to go on a on a round and then kind of like turn really hard into the side. Whoops. It's not working. Okay, so what's the goal of this DLC? I have no idea. There's no documentation of it on the internet whatsoever, aside from there's locations, essentially. Uh, I'm trying to find a couple of exploits already. We already got the rarest achievement in the game. Z30, boo, hello there, Z. Does this refuel the car? No, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> Fine, if you insist. I was trying to flip the car over and land it on the lava so we could maybe, like, skip having to bucket in lava to refuel it, but that's not actually a thing whatsoever. Okay, let's go ahead and back this into here so that we can, I don't know, pipe some lava in there. We do have a little bit of automation. It's not the most effective thing in the world that I've ever seen on account of all of this crap around the place, but it could be significantly worse. All right, let's drop this in the lava. Excellent. And now we're going to refuel the car because it's pretty low on lava. Boop. Excellent. This does work. How you doing? I'm doing excellent. I've, I've finally overcome that cold that has plagued me for about two weeks. I've started a music project with another YouTuber, the one who uh, you keep seeing in chat, the one who lives here in Dunedin with us. And it's going to be good. It's going to be really, really good. He's actually a pretty good drummer. We're going to do a lot of rock stuff, I think. I went over to his house yesterday at the agreed time of two. But unfortunately, he's got the cold that I think I had. It's been going around uh, just about everybody I know. As you probably know, you probably had it. And uh, he thought that when I said 1400 as kind of like the, hey, let's do this at this time. He thought that 1400 meant 4 p.m. So we didn't actually <laughs> end up doing anything. Uh, he was at work, turns out. So it was a little bit frustrating. I went off, I did a couple of errands. I got a blood test. Uh, I'm deathly afraid of needles. I'm quite proud of myself. I went there without Yint Set, which is pretty awesome. Man, it's kind of hard to keep up with this machine. Just dumping materials all over the ground, isn't it? All right, good. Now, we probably want to invest in a forge of some sort. And I don't necessarily know where we are going to get a forge. But we also need to get ourselves a big concrete pad so that all of these materials don't just dump all over the floor like they have been. Like that. Is this next one going to go in? Yes. What about the next one? 50-50. It missed. <laughs> Great. So we either buy a funnel or we just get a concrete pad so we can stick things on top of that. We can't sell the raw resources. You mean the gold that uh, Cass gave me? I'm pretty sure I gave to you and everyone else. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Maybe. Uh, we did... Our flat started getting it around about two weeks ago. 
unfortunately, uh, Terry, you know, personal friend Terry, she's got the cold inside now. She's not dealing with it very well. She hates being sick, probably about as much as I hate being sick. But at the same time, like, she's going to get over it real fast. And everyone has been giving her lozenges and... Uh, what, what is that tea? The Lemsip. G giving her basically all of the cold stuff that they no longer le need. So she's getting all of the uh, viral outbreak hand-me-downs. She's probably going to have the best time out of all of us with that cold. All right, good. I had to get myself like two packs, two family pack sizes of, uh, of lozenges. And unfortunately, they didn't have the flavor that I like. So I, I ended up getting this weird butter menthol flavor. They are truly revolting. I will never be buying those again. They are disgusting. All right, what else we got? I need something specific. Oh, yo, thanks. Uh, we actually have a bunch of those already. We need some scales, though, to kind of like make sure that, that that's it. So we should probably get our bucket of resources, come back here. What else is there to buy? We do need a concrete pad of some sort. We also need a furnace. We need a crucible. And we need a casting mold so that we can actually cast these into ingots so we can sell them. I hope we haven't doom looped ourselves. Also, scales are 146 buckery booze, which we can afford. A funnel is only 110 bucks. Concrete floor is five bucks. I know which one of those I'm buying. Right, gotcha. So, now that we know that we have to do that, this guy is offering us some kind of strange currency, is he not? He's offering us scout guild tokens. Let's go ahead and actually hand in some of these bones because we've got some bones here. All right, that was a long trip. <laughs> To drive. Let's grab this uh, backbone right here and we'll give it to this dinosaur. Whoop. Oh, he loves that. Oh, I just got Indiana Bones, the achievement for donating 10 bones to the museum. Nice. Indy. That was the name of Indiana Jones's dog. I love how people have forgotten that. All right, it's got one leg. It's got quite a bit of a backbone. I don't think, I think we're missing maybe like two, one more piece of backbone and then tails, potentially. Just looking at the anatomy of whatever the dinosaur that is. If I had to, like, gauge it, I would probably say that this is, in fact, a Deathinkysaurus. On account of... He has no eyes. Awesome. Let's go back to base, and we'll see whether or not we can get the bucket of resources, and maybe we'll be able to sell it. I'll take a look at the map in the back, actually, because it does kind of tell us where a lot of the shops are. Right here. So... No, it doesn't actually. It tells us where all the jewelers are. So we're probably actually going to need a jewel polisher more than we need anything else if that's the easiest thing to sell. I know the stock market's around the place as well that we can use to kind of like sell ingots and such, but I don't know how difficult it's going to be to get into the gym business. I don't see it. Oh, here we go. Grinding wheel, 84 bucks. That's actually cheaper than everything else. So maybe we will get it in gems initially. Gems are pretty lucrative. That was a bad dad joke. How dare you, Z30? Uh, ban. You're getting banned. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Uh, we can make jewellery if we get... Actually, jewellery would probably be a pretty good thing to start selling. Although, not for those prices. What's this? These are just raw jewels. Good to know that we can sell raw jewels. And also iron ingots right here. They are paying a premium for iron ingots. I'm not entirely sure if we can sell it at a different stock market, any of the other ingots, but we should be able to. Hello there, sure, I'll take that. Fine. We'll grab all of these quests that we possibly can. We'll get some Scout Guild tokens, because quite frankly, it doesn't really make too much of a difference if we lose a kilo and a half of a raw resource that we are automating currently back at base, which we have automated. We're just going to have to get our bucket out, and we're going to have to kind of like go piece by piece and say, hey, do you want this one? <laughs> and he'll say, no, uh, I don't want this one. It's too, it's too light. And then we'll just look back in the bucket and say, well, how about this one? And he'll pick it up with his hand and he'll be all like, no, that's not 1.5 kilos exactly. Or heavier. I know exactly what 1.5 kilos feels like. I'm, that, that's, that's, how, that's how we live. Actually, if you had a barter system and uh, currency was real limited, you probably would get really, really good at gauging the weight of things. Like, when I used to play Airsoft, I can tell when my mags are loaded or not based on the weight of them. Not because of the weight of the BBs, but because of the weight of the gas that used to go into the magazine to fire the pistol. Uh, batteries also have a different weight, if they're charged or not. Pretty cool, actually. I don't know what we just crashed into, but it was probably a ghost of some form. Uh, now that we're back here, let's go ahead go back here. We'll get a snowball. We'll come over here to this camp, and we'll see if we can't maybe aggress this guy right here. Excuse me, sir. That is a lovely fire you've got going on there. You look very, very cold. Snowball to the face. Okay, we're running away. She tried to retaliate and she missed. Ha! 
Sucks to, sucks to be here. Nice. Okay, so we've dumped resources all over the ground over here. I'm pretty sure we're just going to turn this off. Let's just turn this off. Like, it, <laughs> we probably don't want this on while there's no bucket here. Until we get, like, a magnet on a stick or something. And then we can probably just dig out a little hole in the ice for it to all fall into. And then we can just use that as a bucket. That might be, actually be a really good idea. Maybe we will do that. Okay, so I don't know how we are going to cast all of the resources we have into ingots. We also need a sorting system, because this is not ideal. Okay, let's pick this bad boy back up. We're not going to use that little bucket whatsoever. I don't like it. Uh, we'll throw this on the back of the truck. We'll go get some scout guild tokens, and we'll see if we can't redeem them for something somewhere. We also have that little store that we could potentially build. Because there is now, like, crafting mechanics in this game, which is pretty awesome. That's like the biggest complaint about most action firms where someone is handed a gun with no mag. Like, you can tell that it weighs less. Yeah, I know. Especially if you're handling magazines all day. Like, Alec Baldwin picked up a revolver. Uh, actually, you know, to be fair, to be fair, if the guns are loaded with blanks, it is a little bit harder to figure out whether or not the gun is loaded or not. Especially if your arms handler is telling you, yeah, yeah, it's loaded with blanks, which it was Alec Baldwin's situation. I think he got handed a bit of a bad hand uh, in that situation. Because the lady, with the Alec Baldwin shooting the guy behind the camera thing, right? That lady, that lady who was uh, kind of like taking care of all the guns on behalf of the movie firm had already had several complaints from a couple of films uh, about her, including one from Nicolas Cage. Here you go, buddy. How do you like that? That's not right. Alright, I'm gonna put this bucket here. Because that's probably where he's gonna throw the resources from now on. Go ahead and jam that in there. Where's another big chunk? There's one. How about this? Nay, that's not right. Okay. Uh what about this one? This one's pretty big. Do you like that? Nay, that's not right. Oh, poos. Wow, this guy's picky as hell. Here you go. So much for beggars can't be choosers, huh? Oh, what wow, what a twit. How about this one, friendo? Do you like this one? <laughs> this is a weird technique. How about that? Do you like that? No, he doesn't like that one either. This one's kind of sizable. Do you like this? You like that? No. Okay. Can we take this over to the scales at the store and use that? I wonder. I wonder if we can... <laughs> this is so cheeky. Okay, they're not in here. I think they're up here, aren't they? No, they are down here. Just kind of weirdly hidden. Here they are. Oh, we can actually use the scales here. That's hilarious. Okay, we got 141 kilos here. Let's just go ahead and start measuring them one by one. Because we need two that weigh 1.5. That's 0.3. So we don't have any 1.5s here. Right. That's a little bit of a shame. That throws some spanners in the works. We are probably going to need to get a little bit of money to... How are we going to do this? How the hell are we going to do this? We can take the ores to the top of the volcano. There should be... Actually, if the scales work... Is there an auto smelter around here? Because that won't work. That definitely won't work. Any auto smelters? No. Because they are kind of like always functioning, right? Uh, we're also going to need a couple of these repair tools after we figure out how to actually get the, the money going. Okay, nothing there. We may have to go on a bit of a walk around to find some more stock markets because I don't really see any else around the map. Let's go ahead and see if this is marked on the map. There is a big yellow exclamation mark over here. That makes sense, actually. That is, in fact, the store that we are crafting. I don't think that these stock markets are marked on the map whatsoever. There is one jeweler marked on the map. Okay, so we do need some kind of hand polisher. I hate the weight quests. I usually ignore them. Yeah, it's a good idea. But you can't actually do that in the base game because the end game quest with the king almost exclusively relies on agriculture, which you kind of... <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. You actually do have to go and take as many quests as you possibly can. There's no other way of getting farming guild tokens. So I think it's kind of like an artificial MacGuffin for you to do. Or just kind of like a, a, an artificial chore that kind of extends the gameplay out. Like, in the 20 hours that we played of the base campaign, we automated basically all of the ore generation from the base game. In another playthrough, we saw all of the fishing rod tiers. We beat the fishing rod minigame. We got all of those tiers, and they looped over to the uh, kind of crap tier fishing rod. 
Which is okay, we saw all of that and we dipped our hand into agriculture in the previous episode only to find that the only way of selling your produce is through quests, which is disgusting. I actually hate that. That is such a, a brain-dead design decision. I, it's like a... Because the quests, they're all completely random on whether or not they'll actually spawn. There's nowhere you can go to generate these quests. All right. We want to go up top then. We want to see if we can't maybe start sticking some iron into the forge and get some money that way. Which we may be able to do. We, we may be able to do that. But yeah, base game quests, the agriculture really let me down. That Honestly, that would take so goddamn long. Especially since people don't necessarily request really, really big forms of soup. And the seeds for the quest that you need to do kind of like the King's Quest 1 in the first place, to start that quest, you need about a thousand farming guild tokens. Which sucks when you're only getting 40 to 50 per quest on randomly generated quests. Absolutely terrible decision. I, I really have no idea what the development team were thinking when they put that into the game. Like, I know they were thinking, oh, this will be fun, but to, to roadblock the end of the game until you go and basically master this one very poorly thought out free update. Please don't go up. Please don't go up. Please don't go up. Yes, got it. To master that is just really, it's, it's just hostile. It's just completely user hostile. Okay, let's go over here. There probably are a couple of other markets in the other towns, but I'm not entirely sure how far away they are. Okay, where do we put these? Where do we put these things? Because I'm happy to just uh, dump this entire bucket right into some kind of receptacle. Where do we put it? Or we could just, like, individually drop all of the iron in there one by one. Over here, maybe? What the hell is this? Uh, nope. Okay, so where do we stick the iron? Please don't tell me we need to take, like, Please don't tell me we need an ingot and we stick them here and that's what we craft these uh, things out of. Because that would suck. Please don't be like that game. Where do we put these ores? There's got to be a way, right? There's got there's got to be a way. Okay, it's not a hell of a lot around here to be quite frank. I'm going to put that down before I... No. So, that won't open up any, like, little hatch or anything like that it seems there's nothing there's there's literally nothing here that allows us to do anything okay we'll put this in the back of the car let's go to the other cities then and then we'll see if we can't kind of like find ourselves somewhere to sell everything let's take a look at the map there's the cinder footing somewhere there's actually a couple of stores around the place there is a jeweler's back at the start of the area. I don't think we can sell our raw resources, though, there. And there's also... Burville, which is way on the other side of the map in that direction. Okay, let's try that, then. Let's try Burville. Let's try Burville. Go that way, and I'm just going to drive off of the edge of this, because there's no vehicle damage, hilariously, even though there's repair kits in the game, which, again, I think is a little bit short-sighted, but I'm, I'm glad that that is not actually a thing that we have to be too concerned about. Okay, I'm going to try and, like, slip my car sideways up this hill. And it worked. Great. All right, uh, there is the big city over there that we're not particularly interested in going to. Let's just drive off the edge here and hope that we can kind of, like, go to another city. All right, good. We are not only burning to death, but we have severe whiplash. No. Nope. Now we have death. We've got massive amounts of contusions. Uh, good. We're, we're now driving on the front face. We are now burning to death again. Uh-oh. I wonder how long you can actually be in lava before you die. Like, it wouldn't be instantaneous. There would have to be some time in between, because that is the inherent nature of time. Yep. Still kind of, like, rolling down this hill. Excellent. They see me rolling. I'm burning. Nothing down there. I'm still, I'm still keeping an eye out for bones, too, because we want lots and lots of bones. I think we've almost got, like, half of the bones, which is pretty cool. But I'm not entirely sure if they're, like, random spawns or if we have to kind of manually seek them out from points on the map. Oops, just crashed into a tree. That's a big accident. Yucky. Big yucky! Okay. Still looking around. They kind of glow an orangey color, like that one right over there, which I see on the horizon. I don't know if the quality is high enough for you guys to be able to see that one, but we are going to go and pick it up regardless. You can probably see it now. 
Uh, whoops. Oh, we're in some water as well. So there's probably going to be water mechanics at some point. Oh, I actually see another bone too. It's off on the horizon. Not where we are. All right, where is it? There it is. What is this? A foot? No, it's a rib. That's... Oh, no, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with finding a rib. I don't mind a good ribbing. Now, I did see a kind of very, very, very faint glow off in this direction. There it is. Excellent. I don't really see anything else, though. So we're going to want to follow this road along until we find another little city. I see another bone. Wow. Old eagle eyes over here is finding all of these bones. Finding all of the ribs. Okay, this water is freezing. I don't like this. Let's go ahead and get out of there. And we'll go up this hill right here. And along this road, I saw another little orange glow, I think. I th yeah, there it is. Off in the distance. You can kind of tell, simply because there's nothing on top of the orange glow. There's also one over there, actually. We know that one's over there. Let's go over there after we pick this one up, because this one is actually on the way. Oh my god, there's so many of them. Okay, we're going to grab this one. I'm not going to forget that the other one is kind of like off in the distance where we saw it. You know what? Actually, we're going to grab this one. We're going to go get that first one. Then we're going to follow the road back along here to get the other bone. Because that over there leads to the... Oh, we've rolled the car. That over there leads to the city that we're wanting to go to in the first place. There's one right there too. Are they randomly spawning? Dad Duty, I'm back. Hey there, Dead Space main. How is it? How is Dad Duty? I didn't know you had a kid. I kind of like... I kind of, I, I like the idea of raising kids, but actually doing it is really just heinous. <laughs> it's, it's not fun. It's not a fun thing whatsoever. You just got to like, it's, it's the art of sacrificing, right? And we're not talking about onistic, let's sacrifice uh, the eldest boy of the village every uh, yule or something like that. I mean, like, you got to give up your sleep. You got to give up your time. Sometimes you got to give up your entire job. And the kid isn't even old enough to say thank you for, for all of your sacrifices. So what's the point? What is even the point of kids? Oh, I see another. Oh, I've got such ADD with these bones right now. <laughs> this is not good. We're actually going the wrong way now. We want to go back. We want to go back towards that little village across. Oh my god, I see another. No. What the hell is that? I think that's a dig site just over there. So this is the other leg, I think. So what's that? Oh, I think they are randomly spawning. So we should have three legs now. Weird come down here. There's probably going to be another couple of bones around there. But I'm going to go get this one. The obvious one off in the tundra over here. And then we are going to cross that bridge and I saw a couple more bones across the way as well. Sacrifice everything? Yes. Yeah. I helped raise my two little sisters. I, I remember what it's like. I remember what it's like to be the sacrifice. Like, um... We had to catch a school bus really, really early as well. I had to get up like 5am to get them up. And then get them all ready for school, uh, pack their lunches, stuff like that. Make sure they shower. Sometimes they didn't shower, which I can't really help, but... You know, such is the consequence of uh, helping raise children, right? It is kind of rewarding in a way. I, I do love my little sisters. Even though they're only uh, half-sisters. In my head, they're blood. That's my head cannon. My head cannon is that my little uh, half-sisters are my sisters. Okay, going to come around here. Uh, we want to go up this hill, because I remember there being a bone just up here on the horizon somewhere. Or maybe we just picked it up. Maybe that was actually the bone we just picked up. Maybe I'm just full of it. Anything around here? No, I see nothing, which is awesome, because it means we can go to the little village just over here. We can see if they sell any, any goodies. Oh, no, do I see a glint? I think I see a glint over here. This is a wasteland and a half. Gross. I did not apparent. I didn't see a glint whatsoever, but there's probably going to be one in this crevasse right here. Emphasis on ass, because this place is a hellhole. No, there's literally nothing down here. Waste of time. Oh, would you look at that? There is a bone. I think this bone tree actually just uh, grew a succulent bone and then threw it on the ground. Or maybe it actually didn't. What is this? Vertebrae. Okay, so this is a part of the tail, because the other bits are called backbones. I think it may have actually grown a full dinosaur, and then the dinosaur got a bit too ripe and then fell off the tree, and all of its meat decayed over time. Probably very slowly, though, on account of it being covered in ice. Okay, there's probably another one over there, but I'm not <laughs> going over there. 
We can probably actually go... Oh, uh, I know what this is. I saw this on the internet. People were asking about what this is. And I also did see a glint over here as well. So we'll come back here. That is kind of like an auto miner. So we have to repair that. That's another piece of the crafting mechanics that are a part of this game right here. Did I see a glint over here? Was it over this little hill? Maybe I didn't. Maybe I saw a, a tuft of grass and that was it. All right, I'm starting to gaslight myself now. My eyes are now functioning too well. Okay, we'll go back over here. I'm still going to look around for uh, bits and bobs, though. Oh, there's one right over here. Okay, so we'll go and get that one on the way to the village, because it is literally right in here. 6 a.m. for me? What, like helping raise my, uh, my sisters? No, that was definitely 5 a.m. Or sometimes earlier, actually. Uh, right now, it is definitely not 6 a.m. It is uh, quarter to 12 in the afternoon. Okay, so we need hearthstone blocks. We did a lot of it. We need 1,400 iron bars. We need 30 cloutium bars. Kind of like set up this... I think this is like an auto miner. So we basically just like dump a, a bucket or maybe it collects into some kind of resource collection unit and then we got to collect out of that. I'd tell. We'll figure it out later. Oh, I love the song so much. Brighter Side of Grey. It's the most um, emotionally articulate song that I have ever heard from, from somebody who sings about military themes for a living. Actually, no. Even including other people, it's probably, again, one of the most emotionally articulate songs I've ever heard. You stream randomly then? Uh, not necessarily. I generally start the stream up between 11.30 and 12 New Zealand time. And then I try to end around about 5 p.m. Ideally. But I had to go early yesterday because I thought that I was doing that music project with Epic Flying Horse. And, uh, you know, it turns out he was at work and he, he wanted me to do it a couple of hours too late. And then I didn't really have the time myself to, to do the music project. So we didn't we didn't do it. We, we've rescheduled for the weekend. Okay, what's in here? So, uh, I'll be the judge of that lady. What the hell is this? It's a trophy. That costs the maximum amount of money. Okay, I think this is the scouting guild. Ah, we can buy an igloo here. That's kind of cool. A uh, very big tool rack here as well. That's pretty awesome. Fancy beard. Nice. Why isn't this in the city? Why are these guys selling it outside the city? Are there not like... Are you not allowed luxury in the city? I got the goods if you got the cash. Keep your goods to yourself, good sir. I'm not interested. Uh, here's the conveyor systems and also some frost pipes. I thought they were cloudium pipes at first glance, but they've just recycled the same asset. Why didn't they recolor it? Weird. This is a frost pipe. Why not make it like white or something? Something really cool. Got a centralizer hook, gem polisher hook. Those are pretty standard. Merger hook. And of course, all of the... Oh, sled card. That's pretty handy. Maybe we want to get those at some point too. But all the conveyors here... I don't see any shops. I don't I don't see any stock markets for raw resources or anything like that. Hello, dickhead. <laughs> this guy's glaring at me like I just called him a dickhead. Wow. Unsurprising. Okay, Burville is a bit of a bust, unfortunately. I don't think there's anything here that we could necessarily use. Spend your tokens here. Sure. When I have any. So the hardest part of this so far, hey, nice oh, ponytail. Must be swimming in tokens from all those tickets he sells. Oh, is that what the king's name is? Mott. Right. Well, maybe he's from Mott. I'd say. No, actually, Mott is a location on the map, isn't it? Uh, ignore that lady. Sorry I called you a dickhead, and sorry I almost flipped my truck onto you. We are going to go to another location. I don't think there's any more behind us. We probably have to reorient our vision a little bit better. Let's look at the signs. So that's Burville. There's a dig site. There's also a boat somewhere over this way as well. That's fine. We'll go all the way over here. We'll take a look at this sign and maybe if it doesn't tell us anything we need to know, we'll also take a look at our map because we're probably a bit lost. This is where the boat's going. Let's take a look at our map. Our map move. Right here. So which way are we facing? We are facing into the Barrens. Right. And on the other side of the Barrens is the Shattered Outpost. Now, I don't think there's anything in the Barrens, necessarily. I think it's just, like, a difficult place to get through for the sake of being a difficult place to get through. Because it is very, very snow-covered. Actually, let's go up to the top of this hill right here, see if we can't see any bones on the way. Come up here. Whoop. Okay, saved it. <laughs> Almost flipped the car. Very close. Very close indeed. 
Look at my PS here if we can't see any bones from up top. Okay, there was a little bit of dirt on my on my monitor, but I thought it was a bone for a second and it wasn't. I don't see any bones. Not from where we are. I don't see any little sparkles or glints or anything like that. Let's go up to this little sheer shelf over here. Hey, there we go. Just uh, did a bit of a Dukes of Hazards jump right there. No, Dukes of Hazard. The place is Hazard. Not Hazards. Although that is a probably probably an apt description of the TV show. Okay, I'm not seeing anything under this little cliff either. Or under that one. Uh, handbrake, please. Put the handbrake on. <laughs> I don't see anything inside of the Barrens. Necessarily. Let's take a look at our map and then we will just kind of like... Go in one single direction until we hit the other side of this Barrens. So where are we looking? We're actually looking in the right direction. Good. Let's just go straight from here across the Barrens. Boom. Nice. Landed it. So we probably don't want to move the mouse around too much. So this place is, uh, to my understanding, just an absolute pain in the ass to navigate because it's always covered in frost or something like that. Maybe it was worse last time we came here, because I remember this fog being... Some, that's... There we go. There's the fog. Revolting. Absolutely revolting fog right here. Very easy to get turned around. Ah, there is an auto miner right there. And a bone. Oh, no. There's a bone. That means there's bones in here. Oh, that's terrible. Maybe I'll, like... I'll go ahead and I'll make a, a community guide for this game that has a little map where everything is. Because it's DLC. The documentation, it's absolutely ass. So wait, the DLC is a volcano and an ice wasteland? Yeah, it's Mordor. It's like Second Age Mordor. I don't know if you've read the Silmarillion or anything like that, but uh, it's it's that. Or even seeing the Rings of the Rings of Power TV show. Pretty good. I quite liked it. Right, come through here. It is kind of weird, isn't it, though? Like, I think that the idea of it is that the ash from the volcano kind of blackens the sky and then forces everything beneath it to be significantly colder. Which kind of, it, it makes a lot of sense from a geological perspective. Well, it makes a lot of sense to me. I've not seen or read either. What kind of nerd are you? What, you nerd. What nerd has, you nerd nerd. You, if you've never read them, you're a nerd nerd. Nerd nerd. <laughs> Casually bullying people for not reading. That's the world I want to live in. <laughs> Ah, he can't read! Okay, <laughs> let's come down here across this magma. And uh, then we'll immediately go into the icy wasteland. Why is that walled off? Strange. Oh, is this actually an invisible wall? <laughs> it is. Okay, thank you, game. Everybody say thank you to the nice game for the invisible wall. How about over here? Nope, invisible wall. Great. I don't know, I don't know what the hell they were thinking when they did that. Can we drive along this? <laughs> let's see. I don't want to, like, go all the way over there. Oh, almost. Oh, we can. We can, but it's really fiddly. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, do not drop this truck into the ocean. I swear to God, game. I will refund you. Okay. And, oh, we just need a little bit. Oh, there's a good angle right there. Oh, no. Is this an invisible wall? Seriously? What are you doing? All right, fine. We have to back off of this now. Which is actually harder to do than... Oh, no. I think our truck is stuck. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! All right. It's fallen off the side right here. Fortunately, there is still an invisible wall that is keeping us kind of, like, welded to this bridge. All right. Uh, so, I've got some advice for everybody. Do not try and drive over that bridge right there. Hi, Yinsen. Hey, there's Starry. I had a late start to being a nerd. Yeah, me too, actually. I had, a, I had a really, really late start to being a nerd. I could only get through the first episode of Rings of Power. Wait, you didn't like it? I know a lot of people didn't like it, actually. That, that's not an unpopular opinion. I definitely really liked it, though. Oh, that worked. Oh, that was so convenient. We're exactly where we need to be, I think. Or is this a mining location? No, this is a mining location. But it is right next to a town, so... Maybe we'll buy this. Maybe that's, maybe that's going to be our second mining location. Oh, there's logic right here. Perfect. This is definitely going to be our second mining location. All right, there's a gigantic magma truck up here. Not useful to us whatsoever. I what was here before the new glare dome. Okay, great. I don't particularly give two hoots. What is it asking us to stick in here? 
Ice? I don't get it. Weird. Okay. There is a logic store right here. Hobson's Power Works. I don't think there's anything we can use to sell, though, around here. Which is exactly why we're here in the first place. Oh, well. Keep going. What, with the Rings of Power? Honestly, I did. I really, really liked it. And... I know that's an unpopular opinion because a lot of people say that, oh, it conflicts with the movies. But quite frankly, I did read the books and I remember the TV show, Rings of Power, being significantly more accurate to the kind of like stylizations of the of the Silmarillion than the Lord of the Rings was to the actual Lord of the Rings book. The Lord of the Rings was unusually medieval, uh, considering all of the masterwork crafting and stuff that was in the Second Age. I'm, ki I'm literally currently nerding out. Oh, there's nothing around here. There's got to be like a stock market or something. Do you like my PFP profile picture? What the hell is that? Is that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? I don't know if that's intended to be a proper bridge. Yeah, I don't think it is intended to be a proper bridge. I, I was trying to figure out whether or not we can use it as a shortcut. I'll go to the other side of this kind of like city as well to see if there isn't some kind of stock market for ores. Because at this current juncture, we can't sell anything. We literally cannot do a single thing. Simply because we didn't buy a gem polisher. We can't melt down our ingots... We can't uh, sell anything at any of the available stock markets because there's no stock markets available to, to sell what we have at them. And we just, we simply can't afford uh, to kind of like process the materials we do have into what the stock markets are asking for. Oh, that's a bone right here. Perfect. I'm glad I came this way. It's a foot. Yes. Excellent. I knew something was a foot. And turns out it was this bone. Okay. What's on the other side of this bridge right here? Also, all of the dads in chat, you're welcome to steal my jokes. I'm a dad in training. Lamal, no, it's Felix from Stray Kids. I have never heard of Stray Kids. Is that... Oh, that's kind of like a K-pop band, isn't it? Like BTS? Stray Kids? Something to do with orphans? Okay, I'm still looking around for bones. I don't really see any bones, though. And we're getting back into wasteland territory. So I think maybe we want to dip. Let's dip. Let's dip like a classic uh, kiwi cheese and onion condiment. You know what I mean. He was in the chat know exactly what I'm talking about. They're kind of like artificial flaky uh, powdered stuff that you mix with water and it turns into an actual dip. Which always leaves the next question, which is what the hell do we put this dip with? Because uh, it conflicts with every single cracker ever made. Maybe we just uh, get a handful of Marmite and, and a handful of dip and then we just put both of those in our mouth at once. Maybe that's... Maybe that's how we do it. Okay, there's nothing yet. We're probably actually really close to our original mining area as well. This is also another mining area. Strange. What is this one called? This is the... What is this called? I'm in the boot. L this is called the land for sale. Well, I suppose form meets function. Not going to argue with that. It's definitely land for sale. Okay. Question, you can't bring stuff from the mainland? Do you have to start from fresh in the DLC? Yes! It is a completely separate economy, much like Elden Ring's DLC from the base game. Well, maybe not exactly the same, because, you know, in Elden Ring you can still, like, bring your equipment from the base game to the DLC. But it, it, it translates differently. It's a, it's a separation of economy, which I really vibe. Yes, they're not orphans, though. What, Stray Kids? That's the perfect name for a band of orphans. Like, literally the perfect name for, for a... For a group of orphans. Or maybe like a bunch of uh, vagrants. Or, um... I don't know. What are those kids called? The, the ones that, like, steal. They pickpocket things off of people in the... In the streets in those films. And they wear those paperboy hats 200 years out of fashion. I do not vibe with that. What? The separation of economy? No, it's it's great! It's, it's actually awesome. Because, like... The best part of Hydrogen Air is kind of like... Early to mid-game. Currently, we are at a bit of an impasse because we don't know um, where we can sell our, our gems. Maybe we can sell uncut gems at the... Or maybe we can actually use the gem polisher at the store. If we can use the scales, maybe we can use the gem polisher. It's really all up to whether or not the developers want to allow it. I think we were probably supposed to spend our initial starting capital not on the automation immediately, but on kind of like everything that processes all of the materials into sellable items. Because we don't have any sellable items right now. I'm, I'm just really kind of making a big reach that everything in the store kind of works without having to buy it. We, we're kind of like trying to profit off of the charity of everybody who lives here. 
Don't ban me, please. Don't worry, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ban you for an emoji spam. Anyone who supports kind of like orphan rights, I will entirely support. Especially if they're like a K-pop band. That's a that's kind of like Boy Scouts, but for people who don't really have dads. Pretty cool, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and just drop all these bones over here. Nice. Is that a horn? Is this supposed to be like a unicorn? Ah, uh, it needs another horn. So it's probably going to be like a dragon of some sort. Oh, like dragon D's nuts. Huh? Huh? Got him. <laughs> Even the hydrogen was all like, huh? In a different way, though. Okay, we got a backbone. Nice. I like how all the backbones kind of like, they go into place immediately. Nice. Those are the vertebrae. And this one here is also going to be a vertebrae that goes in the back here. Wow, oh, we've almost finished the tail. Feels good. Let's go ahead and give him a foot. Awesome. I wonder if we can ride this thing afterwards. If it like comes to life and it becomes like a like a unicorn that we can ride. Give it some ribs so it can hold its guts inside of its body. All right, let's go ahead and drop this in as well. Man, this thing is all left legs. I've got a better idea. How about you piss off and let me play the game? What an asshole. Yeah, it's all left legs. I bet this thing is a terrible dancer. Let's go ahead, grab another bone. And let's chuck it into this chest right here. <laughs> that was a good pun. Hey, hey! <laughs> Putting the ribs in the chest right here. It's got a big torso, actually. I wonder how many organs it had. It probably had a huge heart. Okay, let's drop all of those in there. And we've got one more, I think. Just go ahead and check. Yep, nothing under that crate right there. Only one more bone to deposit. Boom. I think we've got over half of them now. This thing's actually very well fleshed out. I kind of like the mechanic. That's very cool. I love that so much. Okay, let's go over to the store and we'll try and polish some gems because then we can maybe use those gems to sell and get some more money so we can actually get some money generation going. Where is it? Right here. Okay, this is the moment of truth. What is this? Gold ore? Yuck. Throw that on the ground immediately. What's this? Iron ore? Yuck. Throw that on the ground immediately. What about this? Hardstone? What the hell is hardstone? No, thank you. What about this? Uncut ruby. All right, let's see. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, I think we're in a doom loop, honestly. I think this entire save is completely buggered. There's no way of getting money. There's literally no way of getting money. We've been to every single store, haven't we? There's still the Lumberton Harbor that we haven't been to. And there's also Moats Island that we haven't been to, but we need to craft something to get there. Oh, there's also the Baron's Harbor. There could be somewhere there. All right, let's go to Lumberton Harbor. We'll check and see if the jeweler will buy uncut gems. Cause if he doesn't, we'll have to go to the Shattered Outpost. If there's nothing at either of those two places, we are absolutely trashed. We are completely done. We are, we are Dunyan Rings. You know what, let's actually come over here. We'll get some more bones along the way. Assuming there's more bones here. I don't know. I don't know if there's more bones. I did just disable the mic, didn't I? I didn't just snuffle into the microphone. <laughs> Please, somebody tell me. <laughs> like, I'll burp into the microphone happily, but... I draw the line at, like, snuffling into the microphone. It's... This one's, like, made of gold. It's like a, a rare item in The Sims 4. Now you did it right. Perfect. Excellent. All right, good. I'm kind of weird, actually, when I get sick. When I get all congested, I don't like tissues because they kind of feel like sandpaper after a wee while. And I don't really like the texture. So what I generally do is I use, like, a really soft towel and I just wash that every day. I, a lot of people would find that really, really gross, to be quite honest. But it, not only do you not have to buy tissues... You can also kind of get away with not going to the supermarket whatsoever when you get sick. You can just kind of live off of the uh, kind of desiccated, powdered stuff that you already had. I don't really see any bones down here. Or any stock markets. Why does this look like Georgia O'Keeffe carved this? I mean, it's pretty enough. It looks like a Georgia O'Keeffe painting. Go ahead, put this right there. And then I'm going to screenshot that. See that as a wallpaper or something. God, I took a layer of skin off my nose when I was sick due to the tissues. Yeah, I don't know why people don't just make, like... Well, I suppose wet wipes exist. But kind of like, if Vaseline made tissues, they would have no effect on your skin whatsoever. Because the, the whole thing about being sick is that your skin's drying out anyway, so compensate for it. Come on, Vaseline. The people need it. 
the, the people need Vaseline tissues. Not like made exclusively out of, out of Vaseline, but just like a very, very slim layer of Vaseline applied to the tissue. What about down here? Maybe there's a bone down here. Maybe we already explored down here. Okay, we can't run off of that ledge, which is actually perfect. Yeah, no, I've got a um, I've got a very, very good way of kind of like overcoming sickness that I'm very happy with. It's always a towel. It's always a towel, and maybe Amazon Prime. I would have said Netflix if Netflix hadn't abs absolutely crapped the bed over the last couple of years, raised their prices a bunch of times, and then collapsed their own stock. Because there was a point where I unsubscribed from Netflix due to the really subpar content, but I still had an investment in them, and as soon as they dipped after I unsubscribed, I was like, nah, I'm just... I'm not going to wait for them to come back up. I'm just pulling straight out of here. Pulled my 50 bucks out of them. Didn't want that stock. <laughs> and now I will never touch it again. Because honestly, I think Netflix is on borrowed time. To be quite honest. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be around much longer. All right, let's go back to the beginning area. We'll see if we can't sell our resources at... Kind of weird that... You know what? Now that I think about it, I thought that it was really cold around here because the ash of the volcano was blocking out the sun, making it super, super chilly. But you can see the sky perfectly. Uh. Oh well. You're all welcome for that burp, by the way. That was free. You guys can have that one for free. No one has to pay for that. That's what you can expect when you come to my channel, baby. Free burps. <laughs> Anything you want. Okay, let's slip around here. We'll kind of two-wheel it for a little bit. If this was Saints Row 3, by the way, that would have been an achievement. There is an achievement for... Um, Riding on two wheels for like a, a really long period of time in Saints Row 3. Maybe I'll play the Saints Row series. Way off in the future though. They are long, long playthroughs. Although I think the last time I played Saints Row 4 I beat it in about just under 20 hours. It's pretty fast. But I, I think I did also just come off of playing it a couple of times anyway. Okay, let's come over here. We'll grab this here bone because I found it and I don't want to find it again. And we'll get back into the truck. There's probably going to be another little wingle dingle just across this valley. This dip right here. Me and my mates have a bad habit of joining Discord call or coming back from being AFK and burping. That's not a bad habit. That's hilarious. Burps are hilarious. It's like the fart of the mouth. Right? Because if you're going to fart into the microphone, people are all like, why the hell did you just do that? And then if you respond, they realize that you just put your mouth right next to somewhere where you just farted. And they, they bully you a little bit. Kind of like if you come onto my channel not being able to read. And then you start typing in chat a bunch of babble because you can't read. And then everybody thinks you're a bot. So you get banned. Like, it's it's that kind of kind of same response, right? But if you just burp into the microphone, that came from the mouth in the, in the first place. So it's not so bad if you keep your mouth next to it. Full time. You should play Saints Row, Get Out of Hell. I had a lot of fun playing it. I did. I it, And I... I hate to say it, my dude, I absolutely hated it. Get Out of Hell was the compilation of every single minigame that I could not stand from Saints Row 2 and 3. That didn't make it into the final cut of Saints Row 4, and I am so thankful that they separated them into two games, because I probably wouldn't have played Saints Row 4 as much as I did if the Get, it, Get Out of Hell minigames were in there. It was, oh god, I did not like it at all. Okay, we've got a jeweler here. Let's see if he'll buy any of our crap. Oh, yes! Oh, finally, money generation. He bought, he bought every single one of our ores for pennies on the dollar. I suppose that's what I asked for when it came to the agriculture, so I shouldn't necessarily complain, honestly. Yeah, I know it's uh, there's a big 50-50 divide on, on Get Out of Hell. Like, on the one hand, the general... I think the general consensus was that if it was just its own standalone game, a lot of people did like it, but people who saw it as an entry into the Saints Row franchise, hated it. Like, absolutely hated it. Finally, money? I know, right? It's been an hour, and we finally found where we're supposed to sell all of our goods. Okay, so I think that maybe we want to invest our money into something that we can use to generate ingots. Uh, we're getting pretty low on fuel as well. Probably just set this bucket back up. Un Actually, no. We're going to go back to the store over in Watsamadingle over there. And we're going to buy ourselves a little concrete pad. And the reason we're going to do that is because we need to put our bucket under it. We're probably also going to get a couple of spare buckets. That's almost mandatory by this point. I played Gat after playing 4, like directly after. So for me, it was more like a DLC expansion more than anything. Yeah, but it was also full price. That was... 
that, that was another thing that people slammed it for, including myself, actually. When I first saw it come out, it was 70 bucks, New Zealand dollars. And this was at the same time as Saints Row 4 was kind of like a few months old by this point. And by that point, Saints Row 4 was going on sale for about 40, 50 bucks. So people were looking at the price difference and thinking, well, why the hell would I be buying this one? It also has mixed reviews. I'm pretty sure, actually, if we go on Steam, I can probably show you. Let's go on the store right here. Let's look it up. Let's look it up right here. Uh, what was it called? Get Out of Hell. Oh my god, it is seven bucks right now. Uh, mostly positive. Oh, that's actually a really, really nice change. Last time I looked this up, people were saying, oh my god, last row Saints, last good Saints Row game by Volition. Wasn't this the last one, though? Oh, Saints Row 1 kind of sucked, didn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it sucked. It sucked a little bit. More like, get out of hell. Okay, that's... Whoever this guy is... Again, like, let's bully this guy, because he can't read. No one gave him, like, hot take. No one gave him any uh, clown emojis right there. I probably would have given him a couple of clown emojis, to be honest. I got it for, like, five bucks. Yeah, seven bucks right now. Is it on sale? Yes, it is full price at 50 buckery booze. <laughs> Still cheaper than it was on uh, PlayStation, though. Because that's, that's where I saw it. That's where I saw it. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some money and we'll get the bare necessities like it's Jungle Book. Awesome. We just uh, consolidated our money. What is this? Gem chisel, useless. Lava intake pipe, useless. Lantern, useless. Lava pipe, we've already got that set up. Yuck, why would we need that? We've got a cork here. Probably put that in my throat so I don't burp into the microphone so much anymore, but too little too late. Let's go ahead and we probably want to get one of these eventually, an ice melter. We don't need it though. Hardstone refiner refines hardstone into usable blocks. Ah, we need to get one of these and we need to build things with it. Okay, I'm going to stop burping. It's, it's probably going to get a little bit cumbersome. Let's get two of these blocks right here, just straight off the bat, because this is why we are here. And I'm going to toss those there and there. I'm going to buy it for 10 buckery booze. I don't think we even had that when we kind of like ended the last episode. Grab this and we'll grab this and we'll get those into the back seat. What else do we need? We kind of need an auto smelter, but it doesn't actually look like we have the ability of getting an auto smelter. So we're probably just going to have to get the Crucible Forge and Cast Combo, which is a, a little bit of a, a thick fart. A, a big smoggy green fart, right? Right in the face of the gods. Okay, we'll grab this. Grab this pot right here. Shout out to Tool. And we'll grab this one as well. Cool. Pass can go right there. What else do we need? Probably want to get an anvil and a smithing hammer so we can craft jewels, which will fetch a higher price, I hope. I don't actually know this. Almost got a whole workshop, by the way. That's very cool. Get this hammer as well, that's mine. Yeet. Probably want a tool rack of some sort eventually, but I don't think they sell any here. Scales, we're definitely going to want these. How much have we got left? Still a grand, that's heaps. Uh, we'll get a couple of buckets too. Maybe like three or four. I think that'll do the trick. Good, one there. One there. Hopefully we can pick up the bucket and the buckets will snap into the bucket at the bottom. We'll get a bucket bucket going. 182 buckery booze, awesome. Go ahead and drop that there. Drop these onto the back of the truck as well. Probably don't need to jump when we place these pans down because they're not too big. Awesome. And what else would we want? We still have a grand and a bit. We could probably get... Oh, you know what, actually? <laughs> we, we can go ahead and we can get another one of these uh, automation machines right here. Let's do that. 400 bucks. Perfect. What did this say? What? Huh? There was a little what's my dingle when we hovered over it. Peak. Yeah, I already figured that out, buddy. What is this? Speed bonus and output size bonus. There's like some some item buffs on this. I don't know what that... Oh, I think I know what that means, actually. I think that what that is, is the... I think that's a bad thing. I think we've got three negative effects on this one. I did see that on the internet at some point. There's kind of like buffs when you craft these machines that you can stick on the machines. Or... The machines kind of like get crafted with the buffs. And then you kind of like work with what you have. Well, let's get a tool bag because these are going to break pretty frequently, I think. 
go ahead get some of that. Take these tools over here too. We probably afford. No, we need the um. We need the scout guild tokens to get ourselves a cart. This is a logic keypad, useless. Hardstone refiner, also useless. Ice melter, probably not too useful. It converts ice into water, which I think hooks onto these lava pipes. No, maybe not, because there's no like. Huh. The little icon on these lava elbow pipes is a lava color. So I don't actually think we can put like water through those pipes. They're also covered in holes. So <laughs> it's probably not going to help necessarily. Uh, what else do we need? Not a pallet. We don't need a pallet. We've got a bunch of these pans here. Magnet on a stick. Ooh, that's expenny actually. Uh, maybe we don't want that. Maybe we'll get that later, but not just yet. What else? There is a mining helmet, saw, probably not too useful. Grinding wheel. We didn't get one of these, did we? Let's get a grinding wheel. And we're probably going to have to go up to this store so we can actually get our money out of this bucket right here. I know we're doing a real big shop, but it's uh, a good thing. We're doing good stuff. Yeah, I definitely don't think we got a grinding wheel. Okay. We probably want some elbows and straight pipes. Whoops. Probably should maybe buy it first maybe maybe spend money on it we're gonna need maybe two of those elbows maybe three at most mm -hmm. and we're also going to need a couple of the straights maybe a t-junction to split them off so we can get a couple of machines hooked into one uh where's the t right there good i'm happy with this 169 nice i'll pay that and what have we got 250 bucks that's a nice even number awesome let's go ahead and drop these here on there and this one can go over here too we could probably actually start thinking about putting all of our machinery at the bottom of the map as well. And I've probably got a good technique of doing that too. We could probably get a lava pipe to drip onto the ice so that we can go all the way down to the bottom of the map without having to mine it out with a pickaxe. Which I'm actually going to try and buy here if I can find one. Maybe we can't mine it. Maybe we actually need to... We also probably need a couple of those filter hooks so that we... Um divert all of the damage away from the machines but it's not going to be worth it until we get uh, five or more machines so 250 bucks there is no pickaxe here i don't think so maybe we can't actually pick our way through or maybe we need prospecting guild tokens now there's nothing here there is a gem merger right here probably do with getting that so we can get some bigger gems there's a tier three store right here can't afford it yet though uh, there's the ticket office construction set. What else we got? Not a hell of a lot. Nope. Okay, so there's no pickaxe. We're actually going to have to use the lava. Maybe we use buckets of lava. That could be a really good idea. Okay. Let's go ahead and get out of here. We're also going to have to refill our truck. Don't know why I've decided to kind of sweep my car in the opposite direction that we were rolling. I love how heat resistant this thing is. You can actually drive this over the lava and the rubber just does not give two hoots. Awesome. I love the heating properties of, of rubber. Excellent. Oh, I've forgotten to do a, a little bit of housekeeping over here at, at home as well. I'm going to light a candle because it keeps me motivated. It keeps me, um, keeps, it keeps my, my, my attention going, ironically, even though we just ran into a, um, a brazier. Oh, I also forgot to take my medication. <laughs> the irony is that my medication is exclusively for my memory. Oops. Okay, I've made a mess. I've just thrown medication everywhere. This is embarrassing. Don't mind me, guys. I'm just getting a, um, a good mukbang of medications going. And this one, too. Oh, well, better late than never, right? Unless you're in the Olympics doing sprints, in which case you probably want to be first every time. Excellent. Okay. I should be able to remember a bunch of things in the very, very near future. But I can't guarantee it. All right, let's go around this corner right here. I should have probably taken my memory medication when we found exactly where to store all of the crap. We, should, we also probably should have deposited that bone as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of back this in. Just so that we can have better access to all of these machinery bits. So what I'm going to do with these here two munches is I'm going to stick them side by side next to the grinder right here. 
And we kind of want a T-pipe up top to split off from the side. So both of them go into here, and then we're going to have a block right in front of it, where we put the bucket. Not there. That might do the trick. Mm, there we go. Good. I like the round bit of the uh, kind of con concrete pads there. Uh, where do we want to drop this? Probably right here, maybe? Okay. Good. Now we need a T-junction, uh, two straights, and four elbows. Okay, there's the T-junction. Perfect. So we can jam this. Nope, not like that. Like so. Good. It's not melting into the... Oh, it is melting into the snow. That is so cool. That is so sick. Look at that. It's auto-digging. I love that. Oh, that is so cool. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, let's continue onwards. We might have to set up all of this machinery again very soon. Which might suck. It might suck. Let's put that one there. We'll be able to, like, see exactly where all the blocks start and stop as well. That's pretty cool. Where's the rest of it? There's one straight right here. Now we need four elbows. I did think we had one kind of spear lying around here, but it seems like that's not the case whatsoever. Yeah, I definitely don't see any piping. Well, let's unload all of this crap so we can actually get to the items we need to get to. This platform right here can move. This grinder, I'm going to place this down pretty close to where we're working, which is just over here. Or not. Right there. Very good. Okay, so we've got some pipes here. I don't know how many of these elbows we have. We might need one more than we actually have. Put that one there, I suppose. And we need another. That's a straight. We don't need that one. We just need more elbows. One elbow, two elbows. We need a third elbow. That's annoying, actually. We can go back to the city and get that, though. We can go and get it. We'll do that. Boop. Okay, that machine should be functioning. I think we just turn it on, though. Is that on? Ah, we need to stick stuff up its bum. Excellent. Let's do that right now. Take this here. Shovel. We'll shovel that. And we'll stick that right up the bum of that machine right there. Didn't mean to throw that on the ground. Let's go ahead and grab this one. And let's throw it up the bum of this one too. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's also turn this one on. And we are going to go ahead and pipe it in. If we can. I don't think we've got enough pipes. So we probably have to go back to the store and get one more of these lava pipes. Which is absolutely fine. We can see just how far down this kind of like, this mechanic here functions. Ow! Oh, I just got hurt by the lava. Oops. Are these all going into the box? Yes. Good. Perfect. That's going straight in there. Okay. So I think we left all of our money back at the store. Put that in there. Put this repair kit over here as well, because we're probably going to need to use it a bunch of different times. And what else are we left with? We've got this cast right here. We don't need the scale on the truck, so let's also drop that off. And this construction hammer. No, blacksmithing hammer. We probably need a construction hammer at some point, but we don't need it just yet. We probably don't need a billion buckets either. We probably just need one bucket so we can refuel this big truck. Okay, we've got our map. We've got a couple of quests. We've got our bones that we'll go and deposit in the city as soon as we get there as well. And then we are going to kind of... Get that one last elbow, and we're going to polish off the automation that we've got going. I think the next thing that we spend our money on is probably realistically going to be the length of pipes required to get to the bottom layer of that area, I think. We are probably also going to have to, like, figure out a way of, of shoveling all of that snow out. Because I don't think we can use the pickaxe. I, I did really vibe it initially. The kind of, like, the ability for the bucket to always contain lava. But maybe that's not going to be realistic enough for us. Okay, good. Go ahead and get another elbow right here. And how much have we got? 250 bucks. These are pretty cheap for pipes, honestly. So we could probably actually recess it into the ground enough now. But we won't do that just yet. Let's go ahead and deposit these two ribs. Go ahead and stick this in here. Excellent. And one more from the back of the truck. Hello there, sir. Why are, you, why are you looming? Why are you looming over the fence like an absolute creep? This guy has scream killer energy. There's also lights flickering on him, but there's no light source around here. Weird. Super sus. All right. Let's come out here, and we'll take our one elbow pipe all the way back home. Then we'll try and figure out a way of getting down to the bedrock of that starting area, I think. 
Oh, oh, there we go. Good. Uh, okay. Excellent. We break danced our way over. That's fine. Good. Let's go ahead and cross this bridge. See what's on the other side here. I do love the volcano. That is such a cool touch. It's always something really neat to look at at all times. Even in the base game, I was looking at it and I was thinking, that is so cool. I love that. It kind of like expands the lore as well. Even if you don't own the base game, it expands the lore out so that you can kind of at least be reminded that there is something else other than your own mechanical monstrosities going on in the background. I'm going to take this little left turn right here. Right turn, sorry. It's a right turn. And we're going to pipe in this last machine right here. Uh, we're also going to be able to see just how far down the lava dripping went. Here we go. We're probably going to need a lot of those pressure building pipes as well, aren't we? Oops. A little bit ski with. How far down did that go? Pretty damn far to be quite... And I'm stuck. Oh, no. I'm, oh, I'm actually stuck. Okay, there we go. Good. I jumped out. What have we got? Quite a bit. Nice. Let's go ahead and uh, try and grind down some of these little gems right here. Like I see a ruby. Here we go. Probably going to have to do this by hand for a wee while, but I think it should be fine. What is this? Hard stone. A block of hard stone can be refined into a block. I'll get on the other side so you guys can read the descriptions. Whoops. Accidentally just pressed the wrong scene. There we go. That should be better. Get that scene off of my, uh, my keyboard so that I'm not kind of like screwing around. Awesome. So now we can probably go ahead and set all of this stuff up up or we could go ahead and just start bucketing lava onto the onto here and see what happens uh i'll drop that there Let's try to drop this here okay that does nothing we're actually going to need a, a system of pipes i think to kind of like clear all of this out unless there is kind of like a machine that allows us to go down deeper let's go ahead and just drop this here so where is the shovel let's go ahead and just start shoveling a bunch of crap into here like this can go in there that gives us resources. That gives us resources. That gives us resources. That gives us resources. This, I, the bucket of lava is just like autonomously filling up, which I adore. This is such a cool little change to the mechanics. Because, quite frankly, the, the base game, how it handled water, needing a piping system and all that stuff, was a little bit fiddly. Uh, we kind of want to dig our way downwards, don't we? Like straight downwards. And hopefully we'll get a little tunnel going into the kind of cave system right at the bottom, I think, which would be exactly what we want. It's, a, it's just a little bit of a shame that the lava doesn't also melt down all of the ores into ingots, which would be a really, really nice touch. But if we don't have it, no loss to me. You never miss what you never had, right? All right, let's go ahead and stick this in here. Go ahead and jam that in there as well. We've almost got like a, a little egress into the, the facility kind of dug out already although still very annoying still very very annoying that we have to kind of like go all the way up to top side to get all this lava uh i'll go ahead we could probably afford to very very shortly when we'll wait until these machines break down and then we'll go ahead and we'll sell all of our ores after we kind of like craft them into ingots or some such and then we should be in a pretty good place good good put this here and this one can go away as well. And this one here goes into the bucket of lava. We've got lots of resources, by the by. Lots and lots of resources in this bucket. If only you guys could see the sheer amount of resources that we've already got in this bucket right here. So I'm, I think how we're going to do this is we're probably going to get down into bedrock, essentially. And then we're going to want somewhere flat to stick our bucket. Or... We could save up and we could go to the other city, which is right next to the logic store, which would make it a little bit harder to sell our items. But once we have lots and lots of money kind of in the bag, we don't really need to rely on selling our items too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down to bedrock and I'm going to then buy another intake pipe of lava. And we're probably going to get just a bunch of T junctions that filter outwards into the same little spot for it to drip so that the bucket is constantly being refilled faster than we can shovel ice into it. So at this current point, I'm pretty sure that the lava pumping in is going to be significantly slower than we are currently shoveling it in. And we're also having to do a little 180 every time we do this too. So we'll be significantly faster once we actually get down south side because we'll be able to angle our, our mouse significantly better. Yeah, we'll put that one in there. 
I can already see the absolute ridiculous amount of resources that is in this bucket right here. I'm also pretty sure that the kind of angle on all of this dirt, not the snow that we're shoveling, but all of the dirt right under it, the angle is something we can actually walk up. Sorry, the autosave just kind of threw my mouse off a little bit. That's absolutely fine. Okay, I'm all the way down here. We've made a pretty big dent so far. Whoops. Embarrassing. Go here, jam that in there. I'll make sure that this thing is not missing. It hasn't missed a single one. Awesome. And I'm pretty sure it's got all of the... Uh, it doesn't have a lot of gems, so we probably do actually want to take it down into the subterranean soil level, don't we? Okay. We got an emerald. Anyway, that's pretty cool. So once we start doing quests, we'll be able to buy enough conveyor belts, right? And that's essentially how we're going to get the sorting system. So I'm not necessarily going to set up for a sorting system right off rip. We're probably just going to, want, going to want to set up as many of these machines down south side as we possibly can. Uh, we still also have to craft a bunch of machines up at the peak of that mountain there. So until we start doing that, we're probably just going to be doing all of this by hand, which is absolutely fine initially. Uh, let's keep on going downwards. Start mining into this little lip that we've left up top side on the topsoil. We want to get subterranean as fast as possible. And I think this is I think this is how we do it. I think this is literally how we're supposed to oh, whoops how we're supposed to do it in the DLC. I think I mix I missed the bucket by by a pixel. Okay, good. We could just get a billion buckets up here, so we just like minimize. Let's do that. Let's put all of the buckets side by side and all of that crap. Okay. Again, we can't sell any of these energy crystals, which sucks ass. Okay, we'll empty that one out, and I'll stick this bucket right next to this bucket. Oops. Right, maybe here? Yeah, that should do it. We're going to minimize the risk of us missing the buckets. Should be another one somewhere. No? It's probably on the back of this truck right here, which we should realistically fill up before we take it anywhere else. In fact, let's do that. Let's do that before we forget. Because we don't want this to run out of gas when we need it most. Okay, I'll come over here. And we'll just leave this truck right there on a strange angle so that we can kind of like get the bucket, and then we can just dump things straight into it. Where do I put that bucket? There it is. Excellent. Uh, maybe we should fill it up with lava first. There we go. Good. We can probably get up here because we've left this truck on an angle. Perfect. Excellent. All right. We probably need about three buckets of this. Two. This is the second bucket that we're sticking in here. It's pretty energy efficient, actually. I think it's probably not any different to the base game but the fact that you can actually get up onto the side of this truck without any issue is just an absolute godsend i feel like the dlc at this point is probably better than the base game it's got an act i say that i just found a clipping texture with the lava that is revolting i doubt the tester would have seen that when they were the tester by the way not all testers but the singular tester who tested this game probably didn't see that right okay that's full We'll just drop that in the back of the truck. No, we won't. We'll actually use it and we'll get a new bucket when we're in town. Uh, this one can probably just go here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Let's keep on digging in here. and We'll just shovel it into literally any of these buckets here. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to aim for the middle one, but if we get a side one with a, with a mouse flick, I'm not too worried like that. Good. And that one goes there. Because we are going to need to reorient ourselves every time we dig into the soil now. Oops. I could probably actually just leave that there. We'll, we'll fix that one later. If we if we miss, it's no love lost. We'll fix it later. Okay, good. Shovel that in there. Shovel all this in here. Get another shovel there. Get another shovel over here. Get some more shovels right there. Get another shovel right there. Probably mine out this little... We'll see if we fit in here first. We do not. Uh, we can also run up that tiny little hill, which is perfect. Good. And put that one in there. In there. Good. I just don't want to hit any resources accidentally, which just puts the pile of snow inside the bucket without melting it. It's a real pain in the ass. We'll keep. Also, we're going to have to do this maybe two or three times. <laughs> this kind of like early game stuff. Unless there's like a vehicle that allows us to dig into the earth. Which we could probably go and look for. You know what, there was, oh, piss off. There was one place that we didn't necessarily go and explore, wasn't there? 
Let's go check it out. There was one place, very specifically, that we didn't go and check out. We'll go check it out now. I'm going to reorient our truck right here. And then we're going to get out while it's moving. So we have access to the trailer immediately. Because we want to check out the map right here. So we want to go to the Baron's Harbour, don't we? We want to check out the Baron's Harbour. We want to see whether or not there is actually anything there. So it's on the complete opposite side of the map to us here. Oh, this is good. I think if we like zoom in, we can see the map. Oh, that's so handy. We aren't on the map though. Okay, we're going to have to use our eyes and ears to kind of like traverse the, the harsh natural landscapes of the Barrens. We do have our two little machines of automation going, so we're not losing any progress necessarily. But we should be able to find some kind of vehicle that might either flatten out the terrain or dig it out a lot more efficiently than we are currently doing. Okay, I'm going to go all the way up this hill because essentially we'll get ourselves a really, really good viewpoint for the other side of the map up top here. And then we'll be able to just kind of like drop down. There's that city that we can't cross. Oop, just crash into that... Uh, that tree right there, that's a little bit embarrassing. I don't see any bones or anything off the side here either, so maybe that's not something we're terribly interested in. All right, there is a gate right here. That's a little obnoxious. I do see no bones. I don't see any bones. Hell is down there? Oh, probably actually a pool of lava. I do see on the other side of here, there is kind of like a little building, but we're going to need to go all the way to the shore. Oh, I see a bone. Damn it. <laughs> we're on the wrong side. Okay, let's just kind of, like, do gymnastics all the way down here. Excellent. And New Zealand wins the gold. Perfect. That's topical right now for anyone watching in the future because the Olympics are going on. Right now. Right this second. I think I opened up a last stream with uh, one of the Olympics highlights. That, uh, that French guy with the enormous pecker knocking the pole off. Poor guy. He's got a good sense of humor about it, though. How could you not? How could you not have a good sense of humor about the internet being all like, oh man, it's a shame you've got such a huge, huge dingling. Gigantic bratwurst. No, that's German. What do the French have? I don't want to say baguette. They also have croissants, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the origin of the croissant is racist. Or as they say in France, the croissant. I think that's how they say it. I don't know. I don't, I'm not French. Uh, let's follow this road. Let's follow this road because I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a little city right on the other side of the barrens here. Because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to lead on to Mott's Island, I think. Let me look at the map really quickly. Stop. Yeah, Mott's Island on the far left over there. Okay. We're pretty close, actually. Uh, we've lost all of our vision. That sucks. Sucks ass. Yuck. Tastes like poop. That's how much it sucks ass. Ah, I can see. Oh, if we take the shore through the barrens, then we can see everything. Excellent. I've already found a cheeky little exploit that we can kind of use to game the game a little bit better. Perfect. All right, so we'll come along here. No, vision. Vision fails me. No. Okay, we'll come down here. I still want to follow the shore. We want to find this place, right? There's, there's a little place that we can kind of like craft, I think, the ticket booth. Which is what that dickhead was talking about when he said that Moat's making lots and lots of money off of tickets to Moat's Island. Whoever Moat is. Or Mott. I don't know, I, I wasn't listening to the pronunciation of the name. Oh! That's significantly more grand than I thought it would be. Right, what are they selling here? Are they selling a giant vehicle that can be used to eat snow? Okay. Hello there, sir. I'm really glad those hydrosaurs are extinct. Wow, she is xenophobic. Good grief. By definition. Uh, so we can kind of like... I don't know if we can buy anything here. No, it doesn't really look like it, unless there's something on this side of the little village. Who would live here? There's a lot of houses. There's like six people that may live here. Oh, look at this. Hey, buddy. Oh, I just uh, discovered the hidden snowman. That's funny. Here you go, buddy. Snowball, right in the face. Actually, since he's here. Uh, let's hit this guy. Run the ass. <laughs> Ooh, my ass. You've hit me right in the bum hole with a snowball. Ooh, wee wee. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll come over here. I don't see any... I see a lever. Is this going to cost money? 
Ah, so we do kind of like need to- I think this needs to be green, right? Yeah, we can't use that. That's okay. That's absolutely fine and dandy. So, nothing around here. <laughs> it's so funny. I found a hidden snowman. I'm pretty sure that was also a rare achievement. I went through them. I went through the achievements. I was just kind of like uh, looking at what we could do in a single session because I'm pretty sure I'm get, I'm just going to finish the series in this game when we can 100% the achievements and then crash the game with all of the resources that we're generating. And I'm probably going to do that just by, you know, generating resources into a, into a bucket. I'm going to like go from sorting system just to go into straight a bucket. Or we could just dump them all on the floor and bathe in them like Scrooge McDuck. That could also be something we do. I'd say. I'd say what we pick. I'm just uh, going back through the barrens to see if we missed any bonds. Any bonbons. Any uh, Tyrannosaurus bonds. I don't see any though. I'm flicking the mouse like crazy. I'm flicking the mouse like I'm playing Counter Strike. I'm not even very good at Counter Strike. I'm good at Hydroneer though. <laughs> Oh, wait, it's so strange how my skills have progressed. Because I used to go from getting accidentally nationally ranked, temporarily, um, in, like, Battlefield 3 on PlayStation matches, and now here I am playing a, a casual puzzle engineering simulator. So strange. Where we started diverting all of our attention. Can we drive through this? No. Fortunately, we can't drive through that water. There's an invisible wall. We just, it just can't be done. Now, we're on the edge of the Barrens. So if we look at the map again, we can probably see exactly where we are. Uh, we're right next to Burnsville. And we... Yeah, okay. So, that's Moats Island. That is the place that we need the ship to take us to. We just can't go there ourselves, unfortunately. Anything over there? No. Okay. The invisible wall uh, clips into the camera. That's pretty funny. I wonder if there was, like, an exploit or something that allowed you to go through invisible walls with the camera. Maybe with the unstuck button as well. Maybe, maybe that's how the unstuck works. It like detects where your camera is and then puts you at a respawn point. Uh, is there any vehicle here? No. There is no vehicle right here. Is there any vehicle over at the city? Hard to say. Very hard to say. We're probably going to have to... Oh, there's a bone right there. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, and we can drive through this. Perfect. Yes. That is now my foot. <laughs> Oh my god, I never thought I'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the archaeology. Alright, what's in here? Uh, seems like there's another one of these Watsma dingles that we can lift with a crane of some sort. That's why I'm, like, looking for a store that sells vehicles. Because I'm pretty sure there's gotta be one if we can kind of, like, lift those things up with a crane. This vehicle also has a big handle on its roof as well. So maybe we, like, maybe it's like a tow truck. Maybe it is like a tow truck. What if we stop? What if we interact with this thing up here? Nothing? No. Okay. All right. I tried. I was saying if there was like a tow line or something that we could pull off of the roof, but it was not. It was not a tow line whatsoever. I'm gonna go around here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's Moats Island. Fairly certain. Like 110% sure. I would probably say. I'll see if we can drive over there. Over the over this way. Oh, I see a bone. Nice. Nice. I love having these 1220 vision eyes. Literally the vision of an eagle. Excellent. Let's go ahead and chuck this over here. And let's see if we can't kind of like drive over there. There might be like a hidden bone, like a a, a, a horn, or even like a the penis, the penis of the of the creature. We'll see if there's not a penis on this island right here. Hello? Penis? Expose yourself. I don't see any penis. Ah, oh, this is the first time I've been disappointed for uh, not seeing any penis out in public. Usually I'm like, oh! You know, being a, a relatively neutral, if not slightly conservative leaning person, usually I see a penis in public and I'm like, oh, that's not the place for a penis. What about the children? Think of the children. And then there are children around and uh, the police get involved. And I need to be um, called into court to, uh, to testify as a witness to indecent exposure. 
and I didn't even want to be there in the first place, let alone go to a, um, a, a, a public office and uh, talk about it in, in front of a bunch of people who are all like, oh, yeah, okay, it was a horrible thing that happened to you. And uh, Like, I, I just want to, I don't want to remember it. <laughs> Let me repress this thing, please. Why is my country like this? I suppose that's just the consequence of justice, though, right? You see a penis, you got to tell someone. Or even the consequence of just being in the bedroom with someone. Okay, we'll come up here. I still don't really see any bones necessary, or any place we could buy any cars. But there may be. What are we supposed to do with all those blocks of ice? Oh, we're rolling down the hill. And we're breakdancing again. And New Zealand pulls the silver. Great. Landed on our feet. Anything down here? Probably, actually. This would be the perfect place to stick a single bone. Or not. <laughs> all right, developers. I see you. Game sees game. Okay, nothing over here. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? There's like a, a giant plateau over there and it's on fire. Which is really strange, given that uh, the whole place is frozen. I don't really see any bones. I don't know where we are either. So maybe we could kind of like cross this part of the map off as explored. Like, hey, you've been here. Let's check the map. Let's actually get on the map. We'll see where we are. What the hell? Gravity, explain yourself. <laughs> That's non-Euclidean. All right, let's grab this here. Map, and we are... We're next to Scoria Chamber. So that is actually a dig site just over there. But I didn't see anything bone-wise. We're pretty close to New Glaze. Actually, we'll probably check out this dig site. Where is it? It's just over this hill and far away. Please, everybody, play, pray that I will return one day. Sure as the river reaches the sea. Man, that's a good song, huh? Good old Gary Moore. Thin Lizzy's guitarist. Yeah, this is, this is the part that we missed. The actual good part of this area. There's no bones around here, though, is there? No. I'm a huge boner, by the way. I'm, I'm just an enormous boner. I need... I need bones. Actually, funnily enough, th uh, in butchery, there is actually a job called a boner where uh, you take... You, you get a... Um, a big sharp knife, kind of like a, a fish knife, and then you, you take all the meat off of the bones. That is, I kid you not, called a boner. You are boning. You are boning dead animals, which in any other um, environment would probably be uh, jail time. All right, nothing up here. I'm getting pretty good with this vehicle. Uh, there's probably bones around down there, but everything is orange, so I would shudder to even have a look, honestly. All right, let's have a look. Uh, don't see anything at an immediate glance. Which is probably par for the course. Oh, there's a bridge over there. Why would they stick bones? Honestly, I don't think any of the bones have been in a difficult to find spot. Have they? And we can drive over this, so it's, it's no issue. Right, where are we going now? If there is a single bone in the lava, that would be a revolting choice. I don't know why anybody would, like, stick all of these bones out in the open of everything. And then stick a single bone in the lava. Because they glow orange. That's, a, that's what I'm looking for, by the way. I'm looking for the orange glows. Okay, there's none there. There's probably going to be a couple down here, maybe. Although I think we've also explored this area on foot. Yeah, I think we have. Because this is right beside the city. Is it not? Yeah, we've definitely explored this area. Okay, there was nothing down there last time. There's nothing down here this time. Let's just stop looking in this gigantic field of lava. Maybe we can save ourselves just a, a modicum of sanity. But also highly unlikely that we're going to stop looking regardless because I'm a, I'm a stubborn jackass and I do want to just, like, make sure that everything is kind of collected. What the hell is that? Oh, there's a bunch of burned down houses all over the place. Probably because of their shield, right? People were building houses outside here and they just burned down because they were too hot, Minecraft style. Most likely. Okay, let's go into the elitist uh, safe part and deposit all of these bones. Oh! Hey, there's a plot of land out there. There's a couple of plots of land around here. How many of these, like, construction sites are there? Because we could probably set up all of the tier stores around here. Oh, there's heaps of them. So there's a tier one store. We could probably put the other two tier stores behind us and those other blank little patches that we saw. 
I don't know how many more of the blank patches there are actually going to be, though. Because it doesn't... Oh, there's one right here, actually. Let's go ahead and just uh, drop this crate that we have. I think that all of the building things are supposed to be here, right? Oops. Okay, so that's the jeweler. Great. So that's all of the building crates that we own, kind of dumped off at the back of the truck already. There's another patch of land right there. We could probably set up one of every store here. Which I think is supposed to be the intent, right? We're supposed to be doing that? Where is this museum? I'm pretty sure we just passed it. No, it's definitely not down there. Do we go in a big circle? Maybe we, maybe we did actually miss it. Oh, we did. We did miss it. It's right here. Okay. Let's go ahead and back it up in here so we can deposit our, our feet. Oh, great. Let's get our foot out here. Excellent. It's a three-legged dinosaur. Good, and we got two more ribs, one and once more, done. There we go. So there are only two ribs left on the map. There's probably realistically two more pieces of the tail and probably, oh, my head just cut off. That was weird. Also going to be a single horn around the place as well. Sorry, I'm just seeing whether or not I can get away with shoving that uh, noisy dickhead here into this pit without anybody notice. I think he'd probably fall into the lava. He'd probably fall into the pit there, but unfortunately I think as soon as he hits the lava he might scream and we may get sent to the jail, which would not be ideal in the least. Okay, let's go ahead and certainly there was like somewhere where you could buy vehicles. I'm pretty sure we saw one in another area, a vehicle store. I know that if we go to this tutorial area here at Lumberton Harbour, we can like buy another one of these magma cars, but I don't care about that too much. We probably want to check out the, sh we did check out the Shattered Outpost actually, there's nothing there. Listen, I'm certain, I'm absolutely certain that there was like a truck store. Where the hell did it go? We probably have to go and repair our machine, so let's go ahead and complete this little Round we've been doing, we'll go all the way back to our little facility, repair our machines, see what we're working with, and then maybe we'll think about, kind of like, seeing if we can't, how do I say this? Yeah, you're trying to like, dig down to bedrock, using lava pipes rather than shovels, because it's so slow. Okay, over here we might, we could also circle the volcano, see if the, um, the car store is around here, but I don't think it is, actually. All right, let's get out. Are they broken? Are they broken? Yes! Yes, they are. I don't see any sparks coming... Oh, now I see the sparks coming up. I don't think there's any sparks coming out of that one. Let's go ahead and just repair these. Un. De. Pla. I did the grinder because I don't know what the durability reading on that one is, and we don't want that one to break while all of the grinders start... Pumping resources into its face. We don't really have a lot of money, so probably not worth going and trying to, you know, get a vehicle or anything like that. But we do need to know where the store is for the vehicles. Because I'm certain that we can, like, lift those things up. Unless we just, like, ram into them, or... Maybe? No. What if we're going to, like, just interact with... Oh! Unrefined forge mark. Take this to the shattered outpost refiner to turn into a forge mark, which can be applied while forging pickaxes, shovels, drills, and harvesters. Forging pickaxes. Huh? Ah, forging pickaxes. Too heavy to lift. So there does, there's got to be a crane or something like that around here. All right, let's jackknife our car facing this way. We'll go back to Lumberton Harbor. We'll see if there's not like a, um, a giant vehicle store across this way. I'm not sure if there is. I'm also not sure if there isn't. But it's both of those things together that make me curious. Alright, so, now that we're here, oh, there is actually a store right here as well. What is this? More pipes, that's cool. Uh, logic gem compressor, this is all the same as the stuff in the city. Bunch of pans, smithing hammer. Uh, no pickaxe, hilariously. We still have to craft a pickaxe. I wonder if they sell auto harvesters. No, they do not. What hell is this? Hardstone refiner. I still don't know what that thing does. As a tool bag, logic lever, scales. Okay. 
Nothing terribly important. What about down here? Anything down here? No? Knock on this door? No. Can't knock on that door. Can we climb up onto the roofs? No. Right. I thought that maybe there would be a bone of some sort on top of the roof, but it uh, turns out there's not a, a bone on top of the roof. And right, nothing over here. The jeweler would pay us absolutely nothing for what we have. Oh. Stock market's in our favor. We actually need to start selling stuff to the stock market too for all of the achievements. That got lunch. What did you get? What did you get? Without doxing yourself, tell me tell me what you ate for lunch, where you got it, how much you spent, and what your card number is. But don't dox yourself. That's that's bad internet practice. But do say all of those things on stream. I'll like I'll blur it out of the chat in the final recording and just hope nobody else is paying attention to the stream. <laughs> it's got every single lurker now here just uh, with a with a pen and paper ready to jot down your card details. But we'll mitigate the damage. We'll mitigate the damage by by blurring out the chat as soon as you stick it in there. Okay, so let's leave this place. We're done here. Crisscross chips and sweet and sour pork. Nice. I love crisscross chips. They are so good. Did you know you can get, uh, I don't know if a lot of people really care about this necessarily, but here in Dunedin, New Zealand, you can get like a two kilo sack of crisscross chips from Pack and Save. It's the only place in the city that sells them too. Crazy. Crazy value. Very, very good they are. But I think a lot of people quite also like them deep fried. So there's one other place that we can look. It's the place right next to, what is it called? Okay, too close. It is the Shattered Outpost. So if we just go left and we keep on going left, we should find exactly where the other cars are being sold, right? We don't really have a choice. There is kind of like a ramp up here. We can look up here, I suppose. There may be cars up there. It's always really hard to tell. I mean, there is a road leading up here. I uh, don't know what that sign was elucidating us towards, but I'm happy to look. Take a look over here. It's probably a mining area, right? Oh, this is grand. This is actually a really grand mining area. If it is a mining area. Oh, my days. Is that, what? Is that a bone? No. There's a glint in the distance. Okay, got a bunch of rocky crags around here. Probably go down into the rocky crags and start getting... Oh, it is a... It is a facility. Right. So we could theoretically sit up here and then just leap off of that ledge. It is surrounded by lava, which is pretty handy, actually. We could leap off of that ledge, go straight to the jeweler, and then kind of like... Maybe... I don't know. Sell all of our goods? This might be a good place to set up. Actually, it looks like everywhere is a good place to set up, except for the places that are offered to us initially. I also don't think we can go down the uh, crevasse, because I don't think that's snow area. It might be. But invisible walls are preventing me from kind of experimenting a little bit. Okay, what do we got over here? We have a jump. I thought it was an invisible wall, but it is not. All right, let's land nicely. That was nice enough. And let's see if there's any bones down into this crevasse. With emphasis on the word ass. Okay. Let's go ahead and come through here. Righty ho. I'm not seeing a hell of a lot, to be honest. I probably went the wrong way if we're looking for bones. I don't see anything down there. That is a dead end. We'll explore down here first. Just in case there is actually something down here. Oh, I tooted my horn. Oh my god, we have done almost no mining in this DLC, by the way. Nothing, nothing. Why are these areas explorable if there's no... Is this an invisible wall? No, okay. Why? I don't see why they would bother program in all of these crevasses if not to hide bones. It seems a little bit strange, doesn't it? Like, it's super suspicious. We should have bones. We should have bones in here. Okay, we'll come around. What else are we looking at? Uh, there's another little direction down there. There's no bones in it, though, and this is an exit. So let's maybe try down here. This is beneath the bridge now, by the way. Okay, nothing. I don't think we've already been down here at all. Uh, we didn't check out this way. Uh, this is going to be a skinny fit for our vehicle, but I am willing to try anyway. 
God, they programmed it in to be exactly that skinny fit. I love that. I actually love that. Okay, good. Come through here. Any bones? Nope, not really. And that just leads out to the path that goes straight back to the city where we arrived here on the boat from. Well, that was a waste of time. So now we know. Now we know not to check any more crevasses because we have basically explored every crevasse here. And all we're missing is a few ribs, a couple of tailbones, and a horn. Also, a leg and a foot. Okay, nothing down there. Ah! What? How the hell did we miss that? Oh, I was probably behind this tree the whole time. What is this? Foot? No, it looks like it is a vertebrae for the tail. So we've probably only got one more tail vertebrae to find now. There's probably going to be a bunch of them on Moats Island, so... <laughs> I'm not too worried about missing them, necessarily. But it is very, very strange that so many of them are actually over here. Probably going to be lots on Moats Island. Let's, let's be completely honest with ourselves. All of the collectibles are probably going to finish over there. Okay. So we're at the shore now. I don't think we've been to this shore necessarily. There's also a big auto miner right over there that we could probably build now that we have access to ingots and such, but... Also, maybe not. I'm going to go up here, see what we are working with. What are we working with? We've got a tree over here. Not a lot. Not a hell of a lot, actually. There's almost nothing across here. What about on the other side of this? This big cliff. Nope. Uh, we did a wee flip, a wee flippy flop over our heads right there. Just fine. Probably not going to be anything on top of that crevasse. Yeah, I'm not seeing any uh, any bones whatsoever. They're probably all going to be on Mott's Island now. Realistically. So this is the last place where there could necessarily be some kind of vehicle store too. I don't think that we can really buy vehicles from anywhere that wouldn't necessarily be here. Right? Because we're... Uh, this is the last city. That we're checking? Shattered Outpost? There is a lava truck right over here, but it's a, it's a replacement for the one that we are already in. It's exactly the same. There's no difference. All right, that's unhelpful. Okay, so the Shattered Breach over there could also be a good little area for us to buy into and mine out, but if the bones are not at the Barrens, oh, look at that Aurora Borealis get a good view of that if they're not going to be over there then chances are they're all going to be over at moats island and we've already covered a pretty high amount of ground in the barrens look at that love it that is a nice sky cute feeling cute might pollute later okay let's go all the way back and i'm going to take this lava river in case there's a bone in here so we can see the glow a lot easier. I don't see any... Never mind. <laughs> hey, where'd you look at that? Asking you shall receive. What a strange world we live in. I feel like divine intervention uh, occurred on this one. What is this? It is a rip. So we only need one more of these uh, by my math, which is not amazing, but still better than Yin sets, and she is a banker, ironically. Okay, looking around, don't see any bonds. Any bonds whatsoever. No bonds. That's just lava. A lot of weird clipping textures too. Yeah, there's no bonds here. There's no bonds here whatsoever. I'm pretty sure we've now also just scoured all of the lava-ridden areas too for bonds. I don't see any bonds. No bon bonds. No bonds whatsoever. Okay, I think we ignore this location right here. I'm sure there was like a vehicle or something. We did find a vehicle store, didn't we? I'm going to Google it. I'm actually, I'm motivated right now to Google it. Uh, Hydroneer DLC vehicle store. New vehicles. Okay, there are actually vehicles here. Where is it? New locations for dig sites, not interested. Scout guild tokens, not interested. Constructible shops, not interested. 
Yeah, we can't build any stores that do have anything. Uh, all right. Abandoned miner, not interested. Ice mechanics, not interested. Vehicles. Okay, so there are actually vehicles here. Most of them are on Moats Island. There is actually a thawing uh, vehicle here. Okay, we can't get anything until we get to Moats Island. That sucks ass. It's all on Moats Island. There's literally nothing that we can do here. I'm here. How is that car surviving lava? Uh, the rubber is really, really thick and sturdy. Rubber, has, rubber can get pretty hot before you have to, um, before you have to uh, replace it, before it starts melting. Where the hell are we? <laughs> I don't know where the hell we are. Let's take a look at our map real quickly. Uh, we are probably next to the cinder footing. So if we just kind of like follow this road and go to our left, we're going to find our original dig site. Okay, there is no bones around here. I'm pretty sure of it. We can always kind of like just double check. But we did kind of drive up that little area up there and we didn't see anything up there either. So maybe they're all on Moats Island. All of the vehicles are on Moats Island. That sucks ass. That actually sucks so bad. So we have to kind of like manually mine out all five dig sites that are on this island here. And when we get to Moats Island, then we can dig it out with something that's not our hands. We also need to be able to craft a pickaxe. I don't know how that's going to be the thing. Maybe we need to do it at the smithy, smithy right here. Can we just like put this somewhere? Please? Okay, right there. Dagger, axe, sword, ring, necklace, nothing. Okay, so we can't craft a pickaxe from this, which makes sense because we can't really harvest wood either. I think this one's broken. I, what is going on with this one? Hello? It's not sparking. Whatsoever. Uh, I don't want to repair it just in case the, um, the game is actually just a little bit bugged. Okay, let's grab another bit of shovel and we'll put it there. Oh, that functions. All right, we've just doubled our output. I don't think that other one was working whatsoever. All right, let's use these last two ratchets on this and this because I don't think that one there was functioning. Ha! Is there no planes or helicopters? No, no. Uh, now, I don't think they're going to be added either. I'm pretty sure that the development of Hydrogenera is basically finished at this point. Okay, let's get our shovel and we'll continue on with what we've got. Or we can go and sell what we have, which might be a good idea as well. So we can just drop these here and we'll shovel an extra little bit of snow into them just to get them emptied out. Like, well, for God's sake. Okay, grab that. That's what I meant by like shoveling it onto a piece of resource. Okay, done. Nice. We'll pour all of these into a single bucket. We'll consolidate them. Boop. We do have a lot of resources though. Uh, put that over there, and we'll take this one, we'll put it in here. We've got a little bit of core stone, we've got a little bit of uh, gems. I think we probably want to sell all of these, right? I don't necessarily think that ingots are going to be particularly useful for us. Maybe? I'd say. We'll just go sell all of this, because I'm pretty sure we've got lots and lots of stuff. Now, we also need to get a device that, like, turns these machines off, I think, so that we don't have to turn them all off at, at one time. Go here, grab this bucket, and we'll pour it all into this one. The leg! The game has lagged! A little bit over to the left. Maybe a little bit over to the right. Right there. Nope, still a little bit too far to the right. Maybe there. That's good. Let's see if that works. Perfect. Okay, we'll take this bucket of enormous amounts of wealth and we will go and sell this at the jeweler. It was back at the first location. We probably also want to refuel this thing too, don't we? Let's go ahead and do that before we forget, because we did just spend ages driving it. I think it lasts a good hour without having to refill it whatsoever. Just consistent driving around for an hour, which is pretty crazy, if you think about it. Let's grab this bucket right here. We'll go ahead and fill it up with lava. We'll jump onto this wheel. Uh, we'll clip into the car. Good. And now we want to dump it into here. Nice. Let's put it there. Then we'll grab it. And we'll drop the lava into here. Nice. And then we'll drop this here. We basically want the ability to see the clipping texture. There it is. There's the clipping texture. Excellent. We've also got a bone, which we can probably hand in at the other location, the other city. 
But we aren't going to do that just yet. Because we need to make a trip there. We're just going to go all the way over here. We're going to sell all of our crap at the jewelers. Why is this driving like such ass all of a sudden? Is there something attached to it? Oh, no, that's a lot better. Okay. <laughs> I think there was maybe, like, something, some kind of detection that just got stuck to the car. Weird. All right, what's through here? There is a bunch of braziers lighting our way, so we just have to follow it along. And we should end up at the Juela. Just around this corner to our left. The Juela. Here we go. The Juela. Can we just back this in and sell it like this? Let's see. Let's see if that works. No, it does not. This, this guy probably crapped himself. It's like, oh my god, what are you doing? Just back the car straight into the... Ooh, this is a good bit of money. Nice. Okay, didn't want to get in there. Wanted to grab my bucket of, of crappy, crappy little gems. And now we're coming out. And now that we've got a bit more money to work with, let's go see how much the ticketing thing costs. Because if we can rush Moats Island, we can definitely get ourselves a vehicle that might be able to mine into the ice significantly faster than we are currently mining ourselves. If we can do that, I'm actually happy to migrate all of the machinery that we have just over here. We've got to be able to get the machinery over to Moats Island. Maybe the invisible wall is going to be lifted and we'll be able to drive over all of the snow. Nope, uh, that is our mining facility. We don't want to be there. We want to go all the way back to the city, just over here, the bubble city. We've got four and a half grand. That is actually heaps of money. Like, that is a crazy amount of money, realistically. Okay, so just need to close this gap and we should be completely A-OK. -okay. weird how this bubble works i wonder if the inside is hot or the outside is just like too cold or what the deal is maybe maybe it's got like a nice cold barrier so that the magma doesn't cook people while they sleep in their homes that'd be gross actually a town smelling of burning corpses would um i don't i don't vibe that i don't i don't vibe that whatsoever let's go ahead and drop off these bones we've got a vertebrae right here we can drop this off don't think it's going to be the tail end no, I think there's one more little end for the tail, or maybe two more. I don't know what the scale of the uh, tails is, is really going to be like. Got one more rib, so I think we need one more rib after this as well. Yeah, it does look like just a single rib now is required. We still need a foot, a leg, and maybe two tails, and a horn. So they've all got to be on Moats Island, right? So we need the ticketing booth, so that we can actually go to the... Island. I don't know if we're going to be charged after we actually buy this, this big construction item. But that, yeah, this right here. 320 buckery boos. Let's go ahead and buy this. Can we buy from here? No, we cannot. Okay, 225 bucks right here. That's going to stack well onto our four and a half thousand buckery boos that we have in the back of the truck. So let's go and grab it. Let's go and grab it all. Where is it? There it is, floating in the sky. A gigantic amount of wealth all right i was gonna go ahead and uh, change the album that we're listening to as well just something a little less aggressive because i feel like i think death punches they're really good like they're good for a while and then once you start rotating them a little bit too much they get a little bit too uh grating i would say uh, let's consolidate our money right here done four and a half Thousand buckery booze. Let's go ahead and buy this here construction item. Uh, let's actually buy all of them. Can we afford all of them? There is a tier three construction right here. We probably can't build it just yet, but we might be able to work towards it if we stop spending all of our goddamn money. So now that we've got this here ticketing booth, where do we set this up? Let's try and find somewhere. So what do we got left? We have already placed down the tier one store and the jeweler. So there's a tier three and a tier two, which I kind of want to set up over there in sequence from the tier one store. But then after that, there should be one more blank area to put down this construction. And that's what we're going to actually work on, on constructing. So that one is tier one. This one here, tier two. 
and the one next to that tier three with a giant wall in the way, which may get annoying after a while, but, you know, we'll deal with it. There's a little pond right here. That's kind of cool. A melted pond. Ah, right here. Perfect. So ticketing booth should realistically go here, right? Yep, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab this here giant ticketing booth, and we're going to stick it right there. What do we need? We need hardstone blocks we need 200 kilos of iron bars and we need 10 kilos of calcium. That is actually something that we can do. That's not, that's not so bad, actually. We can do that. We need a hardstone refiner, though, I think. I don't know where to put that, but we do have a bunch of hardstone. We need 200 kilos of hardstone and we should be otherwise pretty good. All right, let's go back to the store because we still have four and a half grand. We can probably also set up some form of crude sorting system, but I kind of want to save up until we can get to Moats Island, and then we'll set up a sorting system there. Okay, four and a half thousand buckery booze right here. Now, we need a couple of things from this store, I think. Lava pipes. Meh. Lava pressure tanks. So we're probably going to need to get a bunch of those. Doesn't really look like there's any better intake pipes, but we'll wait until we get to the other tiers of things, right? Yeah, definitely. So this is an ice melter. This allows us to... Hey there, spray paints? How are we? Ice Melter allows us to get water, so we can set up a conveyor system. It's only 380 bucks, which is honestly pretty damn cheap. I don't know how it's going to function, though. We need this hardstone refiner as kind of like a base requirement to get to Moats Island, which means we also probably need a... I don't want to say this logic keypad. We probably want to... Oh, refines hardstone into usable blocks filled with hardstone until the logic value is met. So we probably need the logic keypad until the logic value is met. Okay, so out of 10, we need hardstone. Oh, what, uh, we don't want two of those, actually. We want just one of those. And we probably want a lever instead of a... Instead of literally anything else. Yeah, right here, logic lever. Good, we'll buy these two. They are a core requirement. We need hardstone. That is a building material. And we'll just drop this in the back of the ute right here. The beauty ute. We'll get our lever. And that should be everything that we necessarily need. We could probably do with a hand sorter as well. That might be really handy. We could do with this magnet on a stick as well. So when the hand sorter kind of like fails, that'd be really handy too. Good. And hand sorter. Where did that go? Hand sorter? Hello? There it is. Hand sorter. So we don't need a... We could probably actually just use this magic on, a magnet on a stick and drop all of the resources onto a sequence of these. No, let's not. Let's just get the one. Oh, whoops, forgot to pay for it. No, let's get a bunch. Let's get a bunch. It takes lava as kind of like an intake, so we're probably also going to want to get ourselves a few more things. We'll get maybe four of these? Yeah, let's get four of these. And then we'll need four T-pipes to hook them up. One, two, I lied about four T-pipes. And three, instead of four T-pipes, we're actually going to get three T-pipes and an elbow. Because the last one doesn't have to be a T-pipe if it's at the end of a chain. We'll get a few of these lava pipes. One here. And one over here. And one over here. This is going to be our sorting system for the first area, by the way. We've got that. And now we need an intake right here. And we're probably going to want a couple of gigantic concrete pads as well. But we might get ourselves a cart before we kind of like double down on that. Okay. Actually, no. Let's get four of these. No, we'll get it after we've kind of put all of these into the back of the ute. In fact, let's go ahead and just turn this around. And once we turn this around, we'll have good access from the store. So we can just kind of like huck everything in. We don't need to worry about it too much. Excellent. Go ahead, drop this one in here. No, don't want to get on the car. Let's go ahead and drop this one here. Good. Drop this one here. And magnet on a stick can go in here as well because we are probably going to need that. Drop that there. Drop that one there. And this one can go in here. And that one right there can snap to the truck. This right here can snap to the truck. Get this one in here as well. Oh, I haven't mentioned, by the way, I had a funny as hell dream last night. Uh, it kind of like went off of something that happened yesterday that I saw while I was driving Ginset to work. And I, I never really told anybody. But yesterday we had this big storm that was brewing. Black clouds over the city kind of stuff. And... When I was driving through the university area to drop you and set off at work, there was this one guy who had this umbrella in this pouring sideways rain. The wind was crazy. The umbrella was like flicking up and down, like how they do when they snap inwards and outwards. 
This thing was flicking up and down, and this guy was like really struggling with this damn thing. He was holding on to it. And he was shaking it around and swearing at it. You could see him swearing at it as well. And then he finally got it to peel inwards. But as soon as it peeled inwards, it like came in and smacked him in the face and left this huge line across his cheek. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked around and like no one he thought that no one saw him but i saw him. <laughs> i was driving along completely tired i saw this guy just slap himself in the face with an umbrella hard enough to leave a huge visible mark on the side of his face and as much as i don't like bullying that was probably one of the funniest things i've seen since i saw somebody a few years ago uh comically slip over black ice like they like they slip over a banana peel in the movies it was so funny oh my god i almost lost control of the car but the thing is right <laughs> i had a dream last night that i filmed it with a dash cam and then uh basically i uploaded it to youtube and i just became an overnight sensation on the internet which was okay and then my dream basically like it devolved into kind of like it's my full-time job and uh, to make just funny edits of this one guy getting slapped in the face with an umbrella <laughs> so my brain last night wasn't all like hey i know you've been through some hard stuff today here's a uh here's a here's some entertainment so that you can just kind of like forget about that as dreams usually do it was more like hey remember that guy who smacked himself in the face with an umbrella do, do you want to see like a hundred remixes of that all night and then my brain was all like, ah, don't answer. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I, I know exactly what you're going to say. Let's watch it together. <laughs> let's, let's, watch, let's make brain rot in our head and we'll, we'll watch it together. Is that basically just memes? Editing stupid crap? Yes, that's exactly what it was. That's what my brain did all night. My brain literally just took that one thing that I saw on the side of the road and then made a million remixes of it. I had to watch every single one of them. And after, like, it felt like I was doing it for hours, by the way, because I, I dream very vividly. After, like, a couple of hours, I my dream was me sitting here at my editing studio, and weeks had passed, and I was still having to do... I was making, like, four or five hundred bucks every time I edited one of these videos. You're getting millions of views. And I was just sitting here like, oh, I don't want to make another edit. And then I just kept on making them. <laughs> So it was kind of a nightmare. It was a nightmare based around one of the funniest. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> All right, let's turn these off. <laughs> That's what happens when you just, just, just misplace the bucket. Oh, this sucks. That's okay. We did just buy a magnet on a stick, so it's not as awful as it could potentially be. Uh, lever can bugger off. We don't need that one. Don't need this machine here. Don't need any of these lava pipes. There it is. Good. Content farms be like, yeah, exactly. I That is a nightmare to me, by the way. I don't ever want to become one of those guys that just edits a single meme for the rest of their life. Because I have seen channels that do that right at their peak. And then they branch away and they do it, literally anything else. And everyone hates them for it. I don't ever want to be like that. Okay, that was pretty close. Let's go here, just grab the rest that we missed. We'll drop it in there. Boop. There we go. That's pretty good. Excellent. Magnet on a stick. Gotta be said, probably a really overpowered early game item. When, uh, like, way before you have any form of automation. Very powerful. Or before you have any sorting system. Is that it? Oh, that was it. Whoa. Cool. All right. I'm happy with that. Editing the same thing must be tiring. Yeah, I know. It, uh, like, it was going successively over weeks. I didn't even get to spend any of that money. Like, I'd accrued... I remember... I, I was sitting on my phone in my dream, looking at my bank yard, and there was, like, 10 grand in there from the last few months of me just editing this one single clip into memes and then posting it on all social media, media platforms. And then I was like, I hate my life so much. <laughs> it's so weird. It was such a weird dream. I've had worse dreams, though. Got to be said, I have had significantly worse dreams than making 10 grand make, editing a funny thing that I saw once. Okay, I'll get this uh, lava intake pipe as well. Insane nightmare. I remember until I was like seven, I never had a normal dream. I always had nightmares. Yeah, me too. I uh, grew up having night terrors and it was because I didn't feel safe under my stepdad's roof. Funnily enough. No one ever considered that either. I had to go to sleep labs and stuff for chronic insomnia, which now is just like chronic insomnia. Severe insomnia, which I medicated for. 
And uh, now everything's fine. Half the nightmares with a thing coming out of the closet. Uh, just wait until you get to the point where your brain starts making up things to be scared of because you're just all like, oh, that thing again. Pfft. Come on. Cry me a river brain. I haven't thought like, oh my gosh, this is a dream, take me out. Yeah, it does get to the point like that so where you are consciously aware that you were dreaming and that's where dreams kind of like lose their power. All right, intake is in the side, which is actually really annoying. It's re yeah, it's really annoying. Um, okay, so we're probably going to have to stagger these out straight. No, we're definitely... No, we don't have to do that whatsoever. We're just going to have to do uh, T-junctions, I think, which we've got a billion of over here. We're going to have T-junctions, and we're going to line them in basically from behind, facing outwards, like so. If I stick this one against... Where's the outtake? Right there. Right there. Okay, so... This will dump sideways and onto another one of these blocks that I'm going to buy with a bucket beneath it. Oh, but then I'll have to do another straight gap to make a gap for the next one. Okay, we'll do that. No! Let's do this. Yes. Okay, we'll stagger them out. We'll stagger them out side to side. I remember one nightmare where I was six or something. I had a dream where I just spawned inside of my house being cooked alive. Ugh. How did it smell? I bet it smelled terrible. Ah, oh, that's a straight, so that's not useful to us. That's pretty crazy. I felt the heat insanely hot, and I woke up never wanting to dream again. Yeah, nightmares are kind of like that. Sometimes I would try my hardest not to go to sleep because of my dreams. Uh, that is, unfortunately, an unhealthy way of uh, trying to sleep. You got You definitely have to sleep. Even if you are going to have nightmares, you, you do got to sleep. It's good that I barely have dreams anymore. Yeah, you've probably scared yourself out of having them. Like, positively reinforce your, your brain into being all like, ah, not tonight. We'll skip that. We'll skip that stuff. Uh, now we need the hand sorters. We've got a bunch of them. We're just going to kind of, like, leave them as their own dedicated wee things. Because we could not only afford to do so, but it, it's actually good to be doing that. Like that, maybe? Yeah, that dumps out front side, so that's absolutely fine. I don't care about that whatsoever. Finished this game already? <laughs> My dude, this game is never going to be finished. I'm, I'm basically going to try and crash the game. That's where it's going to be over. After I get all the Chivos. I'm going to get all the Chivos, then we're going to crash the game. Then the whole series will come to a complete close. Five dreams now. It's mostly just outbursts of fuzzy memories or things that make no sense. Yeah, I, I don't think, like, normal people ever consider this, but I personally believe that if you can remember a dream... You remember it in like 144p quality and that's actually what your brain is making you dream like. It's always like fuzzy and grainy and and not particularly useful, right? Ivan, hey there, Mads, how are you? It's been a hot minute since I saw you on the channel. Remember last nightmare I had made me feel like I could not breathe and my third year was dream. Everything was weird, not normal in my house. And each time I breathed out and my breath got lost, I could not speak. That kind of sounds, honestly, like, I might be overstepping a little bit here, but it sounds like you may have an underlying anxiety condition. The whole area just got dark and purple. It felt suffocating. I could barely talk. I really hated it. it de yeah, that definitely sounds like anxiety. You might want to go and see a family doctor or um, a, a, a GP or something about that. You might find that you do have some kind of underlying anxiety condition, which can be medicated. I personally take amitriptylines for um, anxiety-related medication, and it works perfect. It's also... Subsidised by our New Zealand government, so um, it's pretty cheap. Then you should play Into the Pit. I've never heard of it. You might run out of space before you crash the game. No, no, I, I can crash the game. Believe me, we've almost uh, done it a couple of times already in the base game. Just made me feel like I can not do anything. Well, I was trying to talk normally. I don't feel like that in public. Anxiety is not... It's, it's not dependent on your location, necessarily. Anxiety is dependent on completing tasks... Very specific tasks uh, that would, in your mind, kind of fiddle with you a little bit. It's a brand new official FNAF game. Oh, Into the Pit! Right. Oh, I want to play that, but I'm watching Markiplier play it. He's Every time Markiplier plays something, I either wait for him to finish it to see if he actually does finish it, because I know that if I do finish it, all of his viewers are going to come to my channel and be all like, oh, that's the other ending. Cool, now I don't have to play it for myself. Which is what happened with My Eyes to See. Or, if he does finish the game, which he does pretty frequently, I'll just watch the entire series, because, uh, quite frankly, I feel like... I, d I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but I feel like Mark, the quality of Mark Blyer's channel is probably exactly the same as the quality of my channel at this point, so... I'm really just competing with the same thing. I hate feeling like I'm out of control. 
and the sensitivity of the weird effects in my dream was insanely high. Yeah, I definitely think that there is some kind of under underlying anxiety with that. It's like Dio was spamming time stop every four, four seconds. Is that a JoJo's Bizarre Adventures thing? I remember uh, a lot of people around me talking about Dio back when I was... It was a big major plot point of that game. No. Uh, Siri. Okay, so let's also set up this, this crusher right here. Because we need to start dumping resources into it. Ah, it's got an intake. And logic. Ah, poos. We need another lava intake pipe. That's okay, we can do that. Uh, let's go ahead and set this bucket back up over here. Is that going to be good? Let's see. Please don't make a mess. It looks good to me. Okay, that's fine, actually. That's perfect. Uh, so we'll take all of these resources. We could probably sell them at the jeweler for quite a pretty penny. Hmm. Yes, it is a... Oh, it is a, a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure thing. I've got no idea what it's about then. I, I haven't seen that series. A lot of people have been telling me to watch it, but every time I try and give it a go, it's like... An anime never clicked with me. That's the thing. Like, I've got nothing against cartoons. I can very happily in, uh, sit here as a 30-year-old man, well, almost 30-year-old man, and watch Spongebob, like an entire season of Spongebob all day, and I will be perfectly fine in doing so. But anime, it's never clicked with me. The only one that's ever clicked with me, two animes have ever clicked with me. Number one was the Dragon's Dogma um, anime on Netflix. And the reason for that is because it was the very, very widely misunderstood story of the first Dragon's Dogma game, very eloquently told by, um, by, by the cartoon, which is very, very good. And also Dante's Inferno. It was made by like six or seven different artists. And every time Dante gets to a different layer of hell, Including Earth, hilariously, Earth is technically the first layer of hell if there are seven levels or six layers in the Old Testament. Uh, every time he descends a level into hell to find his loved one, he uh, the, the artists change. The graphic designer changes for that. Anime does not really click with me. I only watch a few of them. One Punch Man and Bucky Hanma. Uh, I've seen a lot of One Punch Man. It looks, it looks sarcastic and dry, which I'm all about. I think... If I do have time to kind of like start anime, I'm probably going to start with Attack on Titan. A lot of people have said that that's like baby's first anime. And every time I mention it around a friend, they're all like, oh God, I love that series so much. Everybody talks about it like it's kind of real basic, but it's so dark and grim and it's so much like Berserk. You know, that kind of stuff. And then I'm like, what the hell is Berserk? And they're all like, oh, you idiot. You've never heard of Berserk. And then immediately I'm turned off from watching Attack on Titan or Berserk. Because it's elitist and a lot of people who watch it are gatekeeper. Gatekeepers about it. Ever else? One Punch Man is really fun to watch. Oh, cool. Berserk? Yeah, Berserk. Um, all of the Dark Souls games were inspired by Berserk. So if you like how those games look, same with Elden Ring, uh, you definitely like Berserk. I think it started as a comic, but it got a, um, a limited series at some point. Do not show that around a child. Don't even let them see one snippet of Berserk. Yeah, it's probably for the best. Just get them to play some kind of Dark Souls game. It's, it's probably actually a lot more age appropriate than Berserk is. All right, we're here. We need the intake pipe, which we already bought. We got a logic lever. We don't actually need anything else, so we can probably leave. I also don't know how we're going to get these into the back. Never mind, I just figured it out. We're going to back this into the store so we can get the platforms, which will allow us to place some buckets down beneath the other little... What's my dingles? What were they called? I can't remember what they were called, but we can actually take this, go ahead and place it. We'll turn it sideways. We'll get it out into the, the ether over here, and then we'll just drop it into the back of the truck like so. That didn't work. We'll keep. How about like that? Perfect. What about this one? Like that? Nice. That works perfectly. Okay, we need another, maybe, uh, don't want this pallet. We probably need another four of those platforms so we can walk along on them. Get rid of that. Vinland Saga, super gory Viking anime. Oh, that is a game, doesn't it? Uh, that game caught my attention a couple of times. Uh, the anime games, they sometimes catch my attention. You finished the boys season four yet? Me, personally? No, I haven't even watched the uh, first season. I don't have a lot of free time. Most of the free time that I have, I dedicate to YouTube stuff. So I'm always upskilling, or I'm editing something else, or I'm just managing some kind of social media, or I'm starting something cool and new on Discord. Like the Try Not To Bop Challenge. It takes a long time to find those albums. Because i got to like sit there and uh, look at all the albums that I already follow and think, oh, hell yeah, people love that one. I know next one's, uh, mm -hmm. next week's one is going to be as well. It's pretty awesome. 
Okay, we've got six of those. We probably want some more buckets. We probably need a heap more buckets because we are going to be setting up a very crude sorting system without kind of like diving into the, the water mechanics because we need some very specific tokens to get those up and running. All right, let's go. We can chuck these in the back of the car now. One there. And one here. And one here. Excellent. Ah! I seriously love the characters in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Here's what everybody seems to say. I, I don't think anybody's really sung the praises of the story or anything like that. It's just kind of like character development at its peak. Watch an episode a day. You have to watch the boys. All the heroes are the bad guys and the bad guys are the good guys. I might actually end up doing it. It's definitely on my Amazon Prime watch list. I went to Amazon Prime after Netflix uh, based on Netflix's crappy business decisions and their crap content and also... Uh, the people that run it clearly do not know what they're doing, and I don't want to uh, pay a subscription to a sinking ship. So uh, I pulled out, and the faster Netflix goes bankrupt, the faster Netflix's TV show is going to be on uh, Amazon Prime. Heroes? Do not call them heroes. I will be watching it at some point. Uh, last time I had a little bit of free time, I ended up watching Rings of Power. I loved that. That was so good. So many people have said crap things about it, but I loved it so much. It was such a good TV series. All right, uh, let's go ahead and throw this down. Go ahead and try and block this underneath all of the machinery now with the flat bit downwards facing. Like that one goes there and this one as well can go right beside that. Right there. Awesome. And we'll get this one right under the feet right here. Yes, let's do that. Uh, that's not good. That's missing everything we wanted to cover. Okay, let's do that there. Is this going to be fine? Yes. Okay, good. And now we need one more platform right beneath the tootsies of this one here. Tootsies are feet, by the way. Oh no, they ain't heroes. They could be heroes. It's, it's like the anti-hero thing. The thing that defines an anti-hero is that they are villains with uh, the potential of a redemption arc. Oh, piss off. This thing cannot. I would hate to see the toilet for this grinder. It would just be covered in piss at all times. All right, we're going to need a couple of repair kits to get those all done and dusted. Let's go ahead and just empty this bucket out because it's probably a bit too full anyway. Go ahead and drop this right. The, no, okay, there's a block of gold that didn't go into the bucket. Oh! All right, go ahead and drop that there. I'll put that there. I'm trying to get uh, Yin Sets to watch a couple of movies with me. We've got Public Enemies, which is a uh, kind of like dramatic biography about John Dillinger being hunted down by the FBI. And we've also got The Highwayman, which is very similar. It's another biographical um, biographical drama. And it follows kind of like the Texas Rangers that were hired to chase down Bonnie and Clyde when the FBI office themselves couldn't do it because um, it was kind of like the turn of an age. And at the time, FBI were, uh, office workers and agents and stuff were always surrounded by phone calls and noise and all of that crap. So they had to call a couple of um, retired Texas Rangers to help track down Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, because the Texas Rangers were the kind of people who just kind of like look at the evidence and then they look around them for um, clues and footprints and then they just follow those footprints. So that's it. That's literally how they find, find um, uh, criminals. Which, funnily enough, the Texas Rangers uh, method of finding people on the run is how bounty hunters uh, catch criminals these days as well. Don't know if anybody knows anything about bounty hunting, but it's a very, very fine art. and You've got to be quite, <laughs> quite sneaky about it. Uh, let's go ahead and use the sorting system now that we have it. Kind of like sort all these things out. Maybe we'll melt down into ingots and we'll try and craft the Moats Island stuff, right? So we need one item per. We've got gold ore. That is something we want to keep, is it? No, it's not, actually. We want the iron ore definitely separated. So let's go ahead and keep the iron ore. Put that right there. We want, I think it's hardstone. Yes, we want hardstone because we're going to be hoarding that for the shops. And we also want core stone, which I'm pretty sure I saw a chunk of in here at some point. And we want cloutium, which I see right here. Nope, that's gold. That's annoying. Where is the cloutium? Is that cloutium? Nope, that's hard stone. Who's? Okay, maybe after we filter it, we'll actually find it. What? Awesome! We should have put a bucket down. <laughs> I've never used this machine in my life. At least now we know, though, right? Let's go ahead and just drop this right there. Ah, oh, poos. Ah, oh, we can use the magnet on the stick, actually. That's going to be fine. Let's go ahead and um, drop that there. We'll grab our magnet on the stick right over here. And we should be Gucci main. Uh, let's get all of these. 
That's a huge, huge lump of ores. Let's go ahead and just drop this into the bucket. Boop. Okay, some of them missed, which is fine. We can actually just lift them up and then put them straight back into the bucket like this. Believe it or not, this is a really good way of filling up a bucket. Because every time you pick them up, you've got fewer items to pick up. They snap to the inside of the bucket. I know it takes a little bit of time, but it is definitely worth it. Especially to kind of like get all your resources in one place. Dot your I's, cross your T's, all that such. Go ahead and drop that. Good. Yeah, the ball is getting smaller, by the way. The, the ball that we're picking up is actually getting smaller. They kind of look like rabbit poos, don't they? Yeah, all of the ones that land inside of the bucket, they're kind of snapping to the edges of the bucket, I hope. What if we move the bucket? Yeah, they should be snapping to the edges of the bucket. Good. Let's grab the rest of this and keep on dropping it in. Like so. Excellent. Grab all of this. A couple of them didn't snap into the bucket, but that's fine. All of those should have snapped in. They did not. And did they now? No. Okay, those aren't snapping in. Let's get these ones right here. And we'll drop them in. Uh, these ones as well. The only issue I have with the magnet on a stick is its strength. It's really weak. All right, excellent. We now have a bucket full of iron. Perfect. So we can translate that into some nice ores. Probably, while we're doing this, we probably want to go back to the store and get another repair kit because we don't want those machines to be idle uh, while we're kind of faffing around doing other stuff. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump this hill right here. And then we'll push on a little bit further forwards. We should be fine. What time is it? Yeah, still got a bit more time to play this. I think I'm going to move on to Dragon's Dogma after we play a little bit more of this and see if we can't get through the story a little bit faster in that. Because I think in the last time we were playing Dragon's Dogma, we didn't get terribly far because we only played in like hour to hour and a half long bursts. And last time, what happened? We were waiting on Fornival's execution and we definitely executed him. We're going to go for a, a full bad run before we go and do all of the good stuff and just polish off every quest in one big sitting. And then we'll move on to the DLC. Okay. Uh, why are we here? We have a lava intake pipe, so we don't need hardstone stuff. We're here because we need a repair kit. And we need to put this here. Let's get a couple of these. We might need a, a couple of these right here. A couple of these. We got them. Excellent. Let's go ahead and grab this here. Wealth. 2.2 thousand buckery booze, which is actually pretty good wealth right here. And good. We now have two repair kits. Perfect. So now we are probably at the point where we can get away with crafting things, right? Go ahead and drop that there. And I'll come up here, grab this other repair kick. And then we are going back to base. What? how many hours of this game that we've played so far? We've, we've, we're getting to a, a pretty high level of the episodes. I think we're about to hit double digits. I think I rendered episode 8 last night. And by episode, I mean the VOD. Everything's content. Everything's content. I don't feel bad about recycling it either because I, I sit there and I... Every now and then, I'll like quality control sit there and watch what I think to be a crap stream and I'll cut out whatever I think just doesn't need to be in there. And it ends up as kind of like, oh, the first three hours were actually pretty damn good. All right, just upload the whole thing then. All of this was nice. All right, let's come up here. We crash into a tree. That's not very nice. I wonder who put that tree there. Whoever they were, they were very forward thinking. They must have known years, decades even, in advance. Go ahead and bag this in. And we'll repair some of these machines. I know they're probably going to keep on just dumping all of the resources onto the ground, but watch me give two hoots. Okay, that is way, way too bad. Uh, we're also going to have to repair this because it just broke. So this has to go like almost on the edge, kind of like about there, I would say. Okay. Go. Dump it all in. Why is it dumping it in at such an awkward angle? That's so silly. I don't understand. All right. So now we need a magnet on a stick to... For God's sake. We need another bucket, actually. We need another bucket with uh, nothing in it. This one will do the trick nicely. And we're going to have to magnet on a stick all of this crap right here. Uh, hopefully we won't magnet on a stick that iron. Okay, well, I don't think we did, actually. I think we're pretty much safe, right? All right, that wasn't helpful. Go ahead, lift this up, drop it all in, lift it up, drop it all in. 
Okay, that iron is not actually moving from the hand sorter. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Go ahead, just move this bucket really quickly. So we can kind of like do them piece by piece, I think. Like little ones over here, we'll just drop this in like so. Good. They can sit. Uh, probably only want like half of that that we've got on here. That was almost perfect. Uh, let's go here, grab all of these little loose bits and bobs. And we'll drop it in right there. Oh, too close. Too close to me. And drop. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to fiddle it around and see if I can't... What is this? That's a crystal. Yucky, yucky. We want all of the clautium that we can find. What is this? Gold ore. Right. Okay, so probably want to do gold on this next one. What is this? Gold ore. Perfect. Uh, that's hard stone. Let's go ahead and stick gold ore on this one. And we want uh, Clautium and core Stone eventually, but not just yet. Okay, I'm going to drop this in here. And it should separate all of the hard stone, right? Perfect! Oh, that went so well. Not on this side, though. Uh, on this side, it went really, really badly. A lot of cut gems. I'm not seeing any core Stone or any Clautium, though. So maybe our machines aren't really kind of, like, able to get that level of... I see a diamond in there. That's pretty rare. Go ahead, drop that in the bucket. We'll grab all of the last of this stuff. We'll drop it all in. Right here. And drop. Excellent. I'm going to drop this on the floor. We'll move this bucket. And then we'll kind of like get all these. We move the bucket, by the way, in between the rounds because there are some items inside of the bucket that do not clip to the bottom of the bucket. We can just pick that last one up there. And picking it up snaps all of the items in the bucket outwards. So this one's going to be gold. No, that's going to be hard stone. And it's all going to dump out the side here. Perfect. Good thing we got two more of these platforms. So we can place this one down here. And we'll get another one right ahead of there. Any dumping out the side? No. Perfect. I believe that's okay, spray paints. Uh, if you don't come back, you have a great day. Bye-bye. Please have a great day. I beg you. I literally beg you. Uh, let's drop this bucket here. And also... Over on this side too. And we'll just kind of pick them up as we need them, I think. Right there, I think. Have a great make week, you too. I'll come back if you're stream still streaming in a bit. Okay, I still I will still be streaming. I'm not going anywhere for a number of hours. I've got a, a good day planned. We need like one more bucket, don't we? And we don't really have any others that aren't just full of crap. Okay, we're going to take this one and we can drop that straight into the hardstone object right here. Let's go ahead and get the intake pipe. This right here. Excellent. And we're just going to kind of plug it in here, I think. Just put it there. And, okay, can't turn that around, strangely. There we go. I think that's the right way. Okay, good. I can't see in there. <laughs> but that's absolutely fine. Let's go ahead and stick this lever on the side of it. I'm pretty sure this is how we do it, right? How does this work? Crunch? No? Oh! That's what we need the logic keypad for. Gotcha. Alright, so we got to go all the way back to town. Got to get ourselves a logic keypad, and then we, sing, we can start making hardstone blocks. Because at this point, we're pretty much choked off by the vehicles. Access to vehicles. Uh, there is a vehicle. I did just see it when I was looking it up. Well, maybe not just see it, but I, when I was looking up the uh, kind of like the DLC area, I was looking up the vehicles. I wasn't really looking at anything else necessarily. And turns out there are vehicles. They're all on Mott's Island. I think I will make kind of like a map for this game. I'll go back and I'll try and find all of the bones. Or I could just watch the series again. <laughs> Although, then I can't watch the boys. Which I have kind of committed to being the next series that I do watch. Uh, let's go in here. And what do we need? We needed... Keypad, logic keypad, which is gonna require money that should not be up here. Yeah, it's up here. More of these machines at Shut up, my dude. Go ahead and drop this in the bucket right there. And we want to grab the logic keypad, which is just down here. Gotcha. Excellent. Now, I don't think they sell cables or anything, so hopefully this logic keypad is just gonna function. We'll set it to like 180, because that's how much we need to build the ticketing booth. I do really, really like kind of like the, um, it's, it's refreshing. It's a refreshing take 
on the game. This whole DLC. I really like this whole DLC. I don't know how long we're going to be spending here before we basically master the game. Because we've probably spent maybe too long in the early game of the base game. And I don't know if the agriculture is necessarily going to be all that good either. To be quite honest, I don't think it's going to be that good. Okay. So now that we've got all of this, I suppose we could probably do like... We could do agriculture quests, right? We could just hoard them as we find them in the base game. Which I don't necessarily want to do if they're randomly spawning, but... What we could do is we could just hand in those quests until we get just enough money to buy the two seed types for the king's quest. Because I know that when you do the king's quest, you get an enormous amount of tokens as a reward. You did for the prospecting guild, pretty sure you probably will for the uh, other one too. All right, good. So... What do we do? We type like, we delete it, one, eight, zero. Is this how it works? Oh, cool. Right, that is how it works. All right, let's uh, pick this up. It's hard stone. Uh, we need like a, a little perch or something, right? We need a little block to stand on. This one will do. So that we can actually access the, uh, the intake. Uh, let's go ahead and put it here. Flip it upside down. Grab this bucket. Excellent. And hopefully we won't hit the lip right here. Oh, what happened? All right, we got 55 out of one. That's actually pretty good. That's a good haul. Right, let's put this back down here. So all of the items will dump into it as soon as we can. Okay, so this is going to be gold next. And it's going to dump all of the resources in front of it, which is just Perfect. We've actually got another bucket somewhere full of kind of like some crappy minerals that we could probably actually just stick in front of them and start collecting all of the uh, rejects into, right? Like here. Nope, that's probably not close enough. That's definitely not close enough. Right there? Nope, almost. Damn it! Who's? All right, good. Uh, we probably need to get a construction hammer so we don't accidentally pick that up again. Okay, that's probably good enough. Let's go ahead and drop this into the hand sorter. Boop. Okay, we missed. <laughs> we actually missed. Uh, I'm just going to drop these into the bucket that we know it's supposed to be in. Huh? 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 Drop it in, you idiot. You absolute idiot. Okay, now I think we've just got a bunch of cut gems in here. I don't see any core stone or cladium. So we probably are going to have to just, like, dig in through... Something just miss. Weird. But I heard something strange. What is this? Hard stone. Gotcha. All right. So now that we've got that out of the way, we probably just want to outlast this, right? We we need to outlast this machinery. Maybe we could go and check the. We could go and maybe build another store because we need tokens, I think, to start crafting things in Volcalidus. I'm just really quickly going to go ahead and look up where we would actually find them. Uh, Volcalidus crafting. Let's see if anyone's made a guide on this yet. There's a bunch of videos. They're kind of. Somebody's kind of done it. Mm, we need tier two. We need a tier two store. That's it. That's literally it. Okay, we can do that. Let's see how expensive the tier 2 store is, because we might be able to craft that before we craft the Moats Island ticket booth, which is probably going to cost an arm and a leg anyway. But we'll probably, by the time that finishes, be able to afford its extortionary prices. Gotta be said. Just realistically, we probably will be able to afford it. Okay, I should have followed the road. Uh, this is probably too lumpy, and every time we take a bit of a bump, we uh, slow down a little bit. Let's actually get off of this <laughs> horrible little area. Oh! We're hitting everything on the way out. All right, good. So, we're almost at the bubble. I'm pretty sure this is where I'm supposed to go. Yes. So, we got to craft a tier 2 store. We can probably actually afford to buy the tier 2 store crafting kit right now. I don't know if we can afford to actually dump the resources into building it just yet, though. We, we may be able to. We may not be able to. I'm going to see. Okay, what's up here? This, uh, yeah, this is where it is. I'm pretty sure we can afford it. Let's just take our 1600 bucks and hope for the best. 
We'll drop it into this bucket right here. We do have a lot of gold that we can sell to a jeweler anyway. Okay, tier two. 1060 buckery booze. Perfect. We can afford that. Great. So, uh, I'm not even going to bother throw that on the back of the truck. We're actually just going to run past this tier one store that we kind of... We haven't set it up. We haven't set the store up. We need a lot of hardstone, quite a bit of iron bars as well. We can actually afford to make that store now. But I think it might be more important to kind of like skip ahead and craft this tier two store so we've got some tokens. Actually, maybe the tier one store has a pickaxe of some sort. Maybe. Okay, good. What's this cost? 700 hardstone blocks. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's really bad. Oh, okay. Iron bars, 800 kilos, 40 cloudium bars. I huh? think that we're probably just going to have to bite the bullet and make this this first store. Oh, oh, that's rough. That is super rough. Okay, what do we need? We need 20 hardstone, which we can actually get now, and 30 iron bar. A 30 kilo iron bar, which, again, we can afford. We, we can definitely afford to make that store right this second. If we can kind of, like, pick our way down to the bottom of our starting area, we may be able to kind of, like, reset up all of our automation. So that, why, is, why does the car jackknife that way up this one hill specifically? I'm holding the opposite directions on the keyboard, and it jackknifes into the, the wrong way. Strange. Anyway, uh, well, yeah, so we can kind of, like, reshift all of our automation to be subsurface. If we can get ourselves a pickaxe, we're going to have to pick all of that out. Uh, doing it by shovel is just way too fiddly. Every time we shovel all of the snow into one of the buckets, we still have to be at topsoil to be able to do that. So the deeper we go, the slower it's actually going to be. I don't think we're going to be in a great spot when it comes to the shovel. We probably want to rush the tier one store with the 20 hardstone. And then we want to maybe... Oh, I don't know. Wait, where does this dump out? Uh, let's go ahead and actually just delete this. We want a 20 weight block, don't we? Oh, that's... Weird, but also really cool. So we've got one of these. This is a 20 kilo block of stone. Now I'm going to set this to 180 because that's what we need for the Moats Island ticketing booth. 180. Excellent. And we're just going to throw this excess in there. So I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yep, perfect. 35 out of 180. That's fine. Let's go and make this here first store. So at least we've got something out of the way for this session. We've got a lot of resources here. We could probably go ahead and just like... Where are our scales? Ah, oh, they're lying sideways over this way. Let's go ahead and set this up so that we can kind of see how heavy we have our resources at. What have, what have we got here? We need 30 kilos. We've got 104. Perfect. So let's take another bucket. We'll get like 30 kilos of this iron because I think early game it's going to be a little bit sparse. And we'll shove it in there. That's 0.3. Let's just get a bunch of it in here because we know we're going to need 30 kilos of it regardless. We can probably just get a saw as well and just cut it in half. An actual smelted ingot. What have we got? Six. Good. Let's go ahead and continue just uh, fisting these in. I'll go to the other side of the screen as well so you guys can see exactly what the weight is, because I realize I'm covering it up. Good, 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 good. It might actually also be faster just to dump like one third of this bucket on the outside of this one. Okay, we've got 15, so we're halfway there. And then use the, the magnet on a stick to kind of pick up everything that we miss, but we're not doing that. We're not doing that. That's silly. It's a silly plan. A very silly plan. Whoops. In fact, if we can actually get a pickaxe, we might migrate all of our stuff to a different uh, zone. Maybe maybe a more convenient zone, because there are other places on the map. I'm not sure this one has the maximum depth. The starting area in the base game didn't seem to. Okay, we need, like, how many more? That's it. That's all we need. So we can cook this in the crucible over here, the forge and crucible. Let's go ahead and place this right there so it cooks up. And that can go there. And now we're going to drop all of our iron into this bucket. Yep, all of that needs to go in. Perfect. And we're going to dump it into this ingot cast right here. All right, let's watch this pot boil. Because that famously speeds it up, doesn't it? You can always get a much, much faster cook going if you if you watch the pot boil. That's, that's what most chefs say. Always watch the pot. Ah, there we go. Is that everything? Yes. Okay, let's cast that. And I'll just leave this here in case we ever need to forge something else again. 
take this ingot. Uh, we'll throw it into this bucket, actually, because I'm pretty sure we can put the hard stone in there. Never mind. Why would I do that when we're only taking two things over yonder's bread? Okay, I'll take this crafting kit. We'll leave it here as well because we don't really need it where we're going. Let's go ahead and leave. And we're going to follow the road this time instead of um, driving on the hills like an absolute stupid ape. Excellent. We're actually about to polish off something. Also, we did get the hardest achievement in the game in this session, which is pretty cool as well. Mm. Maybe not the hardest achievement in the game, but we definitely got the rarest achievement in the game. Hilariously. And we also min-maxed how to get it, too. Okay, so once we come into the, the bubble town, we want to go left, don't we? We want to go left and we want to go and find the store that we're already trying to craft. Probably should have set up the tier 3 store nearest. But I don't think we... Once we get the tier 3 store, we're probably not actually going to be coming to this uh, city too much from the mining facility that we are going to be going from right here. Okay. One right there. The hell is that ingot? There it is. It was so small, I didn't see it. Excellent. A 30.3 out of 30. Let's see if we get any spear change. We do. This is 0.3 of an ingot. Uh, awesome, I just got the franchisee achievement for building a store in New Glade. Nice. So can we just buy these? Oh, this thing has a uh, speed bonus. Cool. Cost a bit, though. And we can only get one. It's still better than all of the other ones we have, though. Uh, we've got some logic TNT barrels. We could probably actually clear things out using that. Oh, beautiful. We can now start making some pickaxes. Oh, we can just buy one as well. Okay, so... When you look at the little menu that shows you what this thing is, I've also found that next to it uh, says item buffs, right? What this is, is I'm pretty sure every time you go and craft something, it'll have like different properties. So I imagine when we start forging things, we're going to not see three skulls. I think those are just like dead rolls or something like that. And we definitely don't want to be using those. We want to get two tokens and we definitely want to start actually crafting a couple of tools in case we get a really decent tool. Also, smelter unlocked. Beautiful. That is the last thing we necessarily needed to get ourselves some automation going. We wanted to unlock the smelters. We didn't see where the smelters were being sold at, but we needed the smelters to get the conveyor system set up so we can start piping items uh, wherever we want them to pipe out from. But here's the thing. I think we just get one of these ice smelters. We go subterranean in the ditch that we are currently mining. And then we go as low as we possibly can to try and generate some of the uh, better resources like core stone and cloutium. Why are we here? Money. We need money. No money in the pot. Must be up here. We need like uh, 800 bucks? Hey we got 900. Perfect. That's going to be a, exactly what we need. I uh, still haven't found any bones, so the little uh, skeleton in there is not really going to do anything, unfortunately. But I'm pretty sure that we're going to find all of the last of everything on Moats Island. All right, let's go ahead and buy all of this crap. Boom. Nice. And we also got ourselves another lava drill. So we may want to potentially reshape the way we've got all of our stuff kind of dumping into the grinder, don't we? We, we probably want to reshape that. Actually, if we have three of them... No, we're just going to plug and play because we know this one has a couple of better properties like speed and such. So if we just kind of like unplug one of the old grinders and replace it with this one, it'll still be a better system. I was gonna. I was thinking about getting like all three grinder, uh, all three munches dumping into one single grinder, which we could do. But the grinder would break before the. Uh, the, the, the grinder would break before the munches. So it's probably not going to be particularly useful to us whatsoever. All right, good. And we want to come up this hill right here. Skip out the middleman. We don't have to pay road user charges if we're not using the road. That's how it works everywhere. I'm certain of it. No one can tell me otherwise. Let's go into our little facility right here, our quaint little facility. We are going to take this broken machine. We're going to throw it away somewhere where we will never be using it. We're going to take this one that doesn't have um, enormous amounts of gimping, and then we're going to hook it in, hopefully. Like so. Perfect. And let's... Pipe that on. Right, so we should be getting more speed out of this one. Uh, that one there is broken, so is the grinder. Who's... Go ahead and just fix every single one of these. And... Should be good. 
So let's see how much faster this thing is. Because it's got one of the one of the speed perks. Alright, dump, dump. It actually is way faster. So that one should be firing next. Yeah, okay. It's significantly faster. It makes a huge difference. So we are going to get into the crafting of this game. We probably want a bunch of min-max machines, don't we? Let's get our bucket. Let's go up topside. We'll go up topside. We'll craft ourselves a few of these here items. Now, I don't necessarily know where we're going to be fisting all of this crap. But we probably should kind of like take all of this, drop it into the smelter first, and then take an ingot up there. Before we figure it out. I can't see the little... Okay, I can't see where the accuracy dude is, so I'm just going to hope that goes in. Okay, it was okay. It wasn't immaculate accuracy, but... Ah, oh, well. It's kind of hard to conceive immaculacy. Hence the phrase, immaculate conception. Let's go ahead and just drop all of that in. Good. Any more? Nope. Perfect. Okay, we'll cast this out into an ingot, and then we'll just drop this right there, sideways. Sure, why the hell not? Now we'll take this ingot, we'll go up the mountain, we'll see if we can't get into the crafting side of this DLC. Which, we're not necessarily too far from. We're not actually far from getting into the crafting of this DLC. And I feel like this crafting has been significantly better thought out than the base game. Because the base game doesn't have any kind of perk for just adding machines other than increased productivity. Which has kind of like a waning parabolic curve. It flatlines, basically. Once you get to X amount of machines, the efficiency of adding more machines just completely flatlines. And it doesn't actually make much of a difference. I would estimate that to be about 30 machines. Because with 30 machines at Ice Helm, you could probably take the yield of the 30 machines you have, go all the way up to the crafting machine, craft another machine or two, go down, put them out, and then you'll have more materials for basically the same amount of machines, and then efficiency is worthless. Because at that point, all you're doing is just crafting more and more of the machines over and over again. Doesn't really make a huge difference anymore. I like this bridge. I, I like this gigantic elevator. You gotta start accelerating like halfway up the elevator though to actually get off it in time. It's pretty funny. Okay, so now that we're up here, we have a gigantic ingot. I imagine it's going to force us to stick this ingot right here. I think that's gonna be the thing, right? Right there? Actually, one of these weighs almost nothing, so let's take both of them. I think this is one that weighs nothing. Let's just place this one here. Hope that it, <laughs> it takes from it. Now let's take the pickaxe schematic right here. That's the shovel. Yuck. This one right here. Okay, so we got to put this on its little podium. Now, let's see if we hit the lever and it just kind of like takes the ingots from down south side. Huh? No. Right, so there's got to be an intake somewhere, right? There's, there's got to be somewhere where we're supposed to actually put the ores. Oh, here it is. It's literally right there. I don't really think we could have... We probably could have actually just dumped all of our ores into there. Oh, that's annoying. It's a little bit annoying. Okay, regardless. Done. Let's craft our first masterwork design in this DLC, and we'll see what kind of stats we roll. Let's go. What? What do you mean I can't hit it? Do I not have enough, or? I need, like, 80 kilos of iron. Maybe I don't have 80 kilos of iron. Can we just, like, dump it and weigh it down south? I don't know. Let's see. Okay, so it kind of functioned exactly as I thought it would. We've got this one ingot now, and I don't think it's actually heavy enough for us to be able to craft anything. Ah, oh, that sucks. We have a shovel masterwork design right here. Also costs 80 iron, which is just fine and dandy. Maybe we just get a crap pickaxe from the store, and we're going to use that. Actually, you know what? Let's get out of here. We'll pick up our map. And then we'll take a look at which direction it is basically right in front of us. So if we just go straight over the side of this here mountain, we should end up at our little mine. Theoretically. Let's try that. Let's try just rolling over the side here. And here we go! It hurts! Whoa! Way! <laughs> oh, the pain! Ouch! <gasps> oh! I actually see our little mine down there. 
We are now going down. We're going down to breakneck speeds as well because we're accelerating down a straight drop. Okay, we didn't actually accelerate whatsoever. A little bit obnoxious. Oh, there's got to be a better way of getting down there, right? Then going sideways down the, the mountain. Okay, let's get onto the lava because that's where our car thrives in driving. Okay, nothing through there. Please? Please, can I have access to the vehicle? Okay, good. Thank you. That was super jank. I don't know how we got down here without, like, bursting a blood vessel in our forehead. I'll oh, piss off. Okay, let's unstuck ourselves. Oh, that is so much handier. I wonder what happens if we just do that up from top there. Maybe. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. All right, let's see how much of this iron we actually have. We'll weigh it. We should have weighed it in the first place. We didn't, though. What have we got? 74 kilos. We are, we are so goddamn close. And we just didn't have enough. Okay, we've probably got enough now, though, to be quite honest. Let's go ahead and get a bucket. This empty bucket will do. Uh, is this the iron? No, that's hard stone. I'm going to go ahead and just drop this here. Yeah, that should be good. And this one will have to eject out this side. So let's go ahead and start separating out the iron from the buckets that we actually have here. Boop, boop. It's all off. Okay, got a little bit of frame drop when I pick this up. Uh, let's go ahead and drop this right here. Oh, yuck. Did it all land? <laughs> no. <laughs> yuck. <laughs> Revolting. Nice try. Okay, good. Uh, let's turn this on. I'm pretty sure that's in a pretty good place. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good place. Okay, magnet on a stick. Time to do. Time to earn your keep. Oh, the frame drop. See, this is what I mean by it's really easy to crash the game. All right, good. We'll pick all that up so we don't have to kind of like snap everything into place again. Get all of this off of here and we'll drop half of it in. And then we'll pick it up. Huh? Drop it. <laughs> good. And now we'll do it again. And here we go. One more. Excellent. And there's a few little bits and bobs over here that we can probably ignore, I suppose. Let's just get the whole thing. Okay, good. And drop it in. Now I'm going to drop this, pick up the bucket, put it down somewhere else. So it solidifies everything that's already in it. So we save a bit of frames. And here we go. Boop. There we go. And pick it up. And put it down. Good. Now we are going to do the same trick. This is fiddly. This is weirdly fiddly. Okay, the bucket is sideways. That's not amazing. Let's just jam it in the side there. That's funny. Okay, good. Like you're trying to install some DDR4 RAM, but you, uh, you've you got a DDR3 form factor motherboard. <laughs> oh, God, I wish someone gets that. So let's go ahead and drop these three in there. Nice. And these three as well. And this is all of it, essentially. That's all of the rejects. Good. And we've got lots and lots of iron right here-ish. The hell? Hardstone. How the hell did that make it in there? Weird. Okay. Good. Let's go ahead and take all this iron. We'll drop it into the furnace. And we should be A-OK. -okay. What does this do on the ice if we just drop it in? Nothing. Okay. I was hoping we could, like, use that to bore a hole down south, but we cannot. All right. Now we've got that. Uh, let's put it here. And then we're going to cast it. Got a couple of buckets over here. We should probably be sticking them in front of the hand sorters in case we get a little bit lazy and uh, forget about them. They can go there. Uh, I think all of the iron's probably melted by now, right? Yep, definitely. Uh, we'll weigh this next. Oh, nice. I just got the achievement for smelting 100 bars. Perfect. How much is this? This is... Okay, we've now got 238 kilos of stuff. Good. That's what I like to see. Let's go ahead and put those two in a bucket because we can stick both of those into the forge up in the mountain. Good. Grab this. And we're back up topside. We're, we're going to be driving all the way back up again. Excellent. Go ahead. Dump that in. And we'll jackknife across here. And now up the mountain we go. We're going to go to the Hall of the Mountain King. And hopefully the music's going to start playing, but I, I don't necessarily think it is actually going to start playing. We're, pr we're probably just going to be crafting a couple of things. 
I like how the sky goes all red when you come up here, though. That's a nice little touch. Or maybe the sun's just, like, either rising or going down. I suppose we're about to find out, given that there's a, a big sun ray being cast on that side of the mountain. Oh, there it is. There's the sun right there. Nice. Wookie. So, crossing through here. I'm surprised that there's no, like, bones inside the lava pools. That is very, very strange. It makes me very suspicious. And there's got to be, like, a cave or something around here that has a bone in it or anything like that. It's hard to say. Really hard to say. All right. Let's go ahead and wait because the elevator is coming down. Uh, we're going to accelerate now so that we can actually get on this thing. And we're going to stop. How's that fuel looking? It got half a tank. Now we're halfway up. We're going to start accelerating so that we can kind of, like, leave this, this, this elevator before it goes down. Excellent. And now we're in place. Nice. Good. Let's go ahead and grab our bucket. I'm very excited. I am actually super excited. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some crafting. Okay, I'm going to leave that bucket there. Although it's probably going to get all of the crap that we have into a single bucket regardless. All right, what have we got? Oh, my God. That is a big stamp. So this one's got to have a couple of traits, doesn't it? How do, we, how do we know what traits it has? Oh, well. We've got a pick. That's probably all we need, honestly. Probably all we need. Go ahead and drop that there. We will uh, grab our iron, put in a bucket, and we'll go home, I think. We'll go home, and then we'll kind of reorganize. Re-up. Maybe, maybe change our plan a little bit. Okay. Come straight to... Oh, we didn't need to do that, actually. We need to go to the... I'll test to see if we can just go to the end of this volcano. Because going back to the mining facility is actually a bit of a pain in the ass. We'll go over here. We'll drive off the edge and then we'll hit the unstuck button. We'll, we'll see what happens. Man, even getting to the ledge is actually a bit of a pain. My right, good. A giant tree right here kind of blocking our, our tires. And over we go. Let's go over here. And we hit unstuck. Oh, that is so handy. Oh, I love that. I love that. I don't know if it'll work for the other mining facilities, but it definitely works for here, and I'm all about that. Okay, so we've got our bucket. It contains a single iron ingot, which is absolutely fine and dandy. We're going to go ahead and grab our pickaxe, and we're going to see what it does. It is fast. It hits a, a fairly substantial area as well, significantly bigger than the lava. Oh, this is so much easier than shoveling. Oh my god, yes. We are going to have in-game facilities in no time at this rate. So if we can mine all the way down to the bottom of this pocket, we'll probably go ahead and invest uh, whatever money we have into whatever gold we have right here into kind of like getting not more machinery, but more efficient machinery. We'll get more and more piping systems, and we'll also probably get a conveyor system that pipes all of the resources up topside so that we have access to them at all times. They're kind of like automatically translated into ingots. We don't need to kind of like worry too much about it. And I think that's going to be a pretty good place to end this here. Kind of like the, the game for now. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. It is a really good game. And I'm pretty excited again to see kind of like where the DLC takes us. Moats Island, I'm pretty excited to see that. But I'm not necessarily going to be holding my breath since I saw just how much crap we actually need for uh, uh, things like hardstones and all that stuff. But at the same time, like the hardstone compressor is also quite cool. I really do like that addition to the game. I do like that you can kind of like, without knowing how to use logic gates or anything like that, which is in the base game, you can definitely go out of your way to just punch in the, the weight that you want, and then it spits out whatever that is in the weight that you asked for, which I, I can't ask for. I literally can't ask for anything more. I can't want for anything more than that. All right, we're pretty close to the, um, probably the lowest section of this area. I wonder what kind of, like, big goodies we're going to get down here, because I know that there are diamonds that are added to the game as a gemstone. We can definitely get a gem polisher hook that kind of, like, centralizes all those. I don't think we're going to necessarily dive too deep into the questing. Because there's probably going to be, on Moats Island, uh, very, very easy ways of getting lots of tokens without having to do all of those individual fiddly little quests. Right? 
I think that's definitely going to be a thing. Okay, good. Get all of this kind of mined out. Man, this just does not stop going down. We're probably not also going to set up too many machines down south side either. We're, pro we're probably just going to get the machines that we do have already. We're not really going to kind of like make any more because we, we need to get those shops made so that we can have access to the little wingle dingles that we stick under the forge in the mountain so we can actually craft them. So we're probably just going to take the three machines that we do have, stick it down here, and we're probably going to move to a better location. Because now that we have a pickaxe, this is going to absolutely catapult us right out of this ditch that we kind of find ourselves in right here. Because we're in a, a, a bit of a plateau. We're probably pretty close to automating money as well at this point. Because if we can get some machinery down in the ditch as deep down as we can possibly get it, we're going to be fine. We're going to be absolutely A-OK. -okay. okay. But I think we're going to have to do this in the next episode. It is also really nice that I can just walk out of here too. Wow, that is a deep hole. Excellent. Um, I don't know how deep we can actually go down, but we probably want to start kind of like centralizing down here, right? Down, uh, like, due down here. Due south of the pickaxe's location. So, I'm going to end the episode for this game, and we're going to go and play a different game, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Right up here, you can find the playlist for Hydroneer that I have made. And right up here, you can find another playlist that I think you'd really enjoy. Down in the com no, not comments, description of this video, you're going to find a link to my Discord where you can chat to me and my community personally. It's much the same as the comments section, but I'm on there at all times. And of course, until I make the next episode or you catch the next stream, thank you so much for watching and goodbye!